Hello there, live on a Tuesday, and I hope you are all ready for a battle of the ages. So I am doing my best to set this up as a <laughs> as a wonderful new uh, format for this show, and I'm hoping that you guys are willing to be uh, very active participants tonight, because we will absolutely be needing you. Tonight is going to be a battle for the ages that, as you can see from the title of the video, I'm calling In Defense of the Genre, which is a reference to a uh, emo pop punk band called Say Anything, where we are going to have two individuals come in and defend a genre to the death, literally. But there's a whole lot of twists coming that they have no clue about and they are both very anxious about. So we're going to dive in with both of our active competitors now. First, in our blue corner, we've got the Professor Emeritus. We've got the uh, Sultan of Franco. We've got the fighter from North Carolina. Uh, nothing. Uh, he says he is not a professional funny man, and he's very nervous. We have Dr. Will Dodson. Thanks for coming on tonight. The Sultan of Franco. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah I did my best. I should have said something like the fighter of Franco. Uh, in the red corner, his opponent for tonight is uh, really, really anxious to come and uh, take his A game to the absolute top of the ring and smother Mr. Dr. Dodson uh, with his knowledge on comedy. It is writer and comedian Jeremy Long, and I'd like to point out this is the first time the two of them have been on this show together. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, wait. Wrong sport. <laughs> I love that you had to take the glasses off just to get it on. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Even uh, better, all right. Still really, really tight. So uh, Stan immediately said, ding, 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 round one. You have no idea how apropos we're going to try to make that tonight. Uh, Holland is here for the fight. Alyssa Smith says, hello, happy to catch us live. We are happy you're here. Uh, Emo pop punk, hell yeah, Stan, it's the best. By uh, the way, I might add that I saw, I've seen Say Anything several times live. I love them, so what a great reference. They, they performed at the Troubadour here in Los Angeles three mm -hmm. nights in a row. I just went all three nights. First night, disc one of In Defense of the Genre. Second night, disc two of In Defense of the Genre, front to back. And third night, uh, the other album. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one with uh, Alive with the Glory. Of, what's the name of that album? I'm not even going to help. I love the level of knowledge you're bringing. <laughs> All right, everybody. We are going to be doing the best we can to make this super interesting, but we need your help tonight. So I'm going to explain the game that I have sort of been crafting for the last couple of weeks. Both of our opponents here have sent me a list of their indefensible best 16 comedic TV shows of all time. What they don't know is I took that list and tore it to shreds and only kept some of those titles on our list of the night. And uh, I've thrown some things that will be seen as perhaps some roadblocks in your way tonight. And you are going to be tasked to defend, no matter what the item is, your assigned show in your part of the bracket. Now, as we are going throughout this tonight, there are going to be a lot of things that I uh, will we'll just say I randomly decide to, to make this a little more dramatic. And I will bring something up and you will have to react to it on the spot. Is a Real Boy is the name of that other album. I'm glad you got there finally. <laughs> <laughs> if I may, if I may, if I may quote the brothers from uh, the classic uh, trauma film Mother's Day, uh, "Disco sucks, punks stupid." Well, uh, I, I was about to do it to him. We we were still going to stay. <laughs> you knock me out. <laughs> Will and I are both very nervous about this, and have been for a while. I'm told. I I I didn't tell myself. I have been nervous. I was told that Will was nervous. And I even have my comfort food, which is peanut butter pretzels. I, I have my uh, comfort food as well, <laughs> <laughs> which is a which is a liter of gas station wine. Yeah, I, I think this is about to go amazingly. It was empty before we even started the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming straight from class too, so I'm like, 
oh, and man. I'm coming straight from work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have a full 32 show bracket that we are going to fight through tonight to find out what is the best show of all time. Whoever is the one that is defending the final show that wins will be the winner of the inaugural episode of In Defense of the Genre. And as we go on, if you have any questions, please raise them. Uh, But the best part that we didn't even bring up yet, everybody that's in the chat, you are going to be able to decide who wins each and every single round. Oh, shit. Uh, (laughs) We are going to be doing a lot to screw with them. And if you have any suggestions to screw with them, I am all, I was going to say I'm all ears, but I guess I'm all eyes. You can put it in the chat and uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. John um, likes this trio. Of course. Hi, Stan. I wish I was eating. I, this, if there was ever a night to eat fat salads, it's tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, So we're going to try to go through this, not super quickly, but on some of these, we're going to speed some things up because it's 32 shows. That's a lot to defend over the course of nine hours. So um... (laughs) I don't think I've seen 32 shows. New record. (laughs) Uh, First, I wanted to, of course, just bring the overall topic to each of us. We know that Jeremy knows comedy. Will, what is your history with comedic TV shows? Well, Andy Griffith. That's a good one. Much. <laughs> Ozzy and Harriet, that kind of thing. How did you come up with 16, Will? <laughs> well, there was the Ricky Nelson show, and then there's <laughs> then there's Dennis the Menace. And, um, uh, it's going to be tough. You know, I saw, my father saw um, um, Gomer Pyle sing opera. Cool. <laughs> you know, Gomer Pyle is my dad's favorite show of all time, so I watched yeah. it. That. Yeah. You know, Jim Neighbors was a was a bona fide opera singer, uh, and uh, and my dad saw him. Yeah, so yeah. I, I feel I bring um, a legacy to this debate. Uh, Sam Newman's here, my um, boss and coworker. Yep, I was going to say it. <laughs> uh, Will, what is your history with TV shows as far as, like, do you watch them very often? Because obviously we all are movie people. Are you are you super into TV? Uh, no. <laughs> Did you know that when you paired us together, Ryan? Uh, no, uh, I think Will is being uh, difficult on purpose. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, uh, I uh, uh, you know, so I grew up in the 80s. So, I, you know, I've, I've seen every episode of, of Knight Rider and, and things like that. And I, I have a, a, a very specific you know, kind of taste uh, the, the TV shows I've seen, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I'm um, as well versed in television as I am in, in, in other stuff. But you know, uh, I, I know enough. I'll add that Will mentioned growing up in the '80s, and I just want to say that, in case this was part of Ryan's dastardly plan all along, as a comedian and just fan of all things comedy, I am a big fan of uh, classic you know, comedies, classic sitcoms, classic comedy shows from the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, uh, Not only did I grow up watching that a lot because of my dad, TV land, things like that, but even just when becoming a comic, you, it's important to do your research and and learn about the history of the history and, and, and what came before where you are currently. So I'm very well versed in, in a lot of the, despite my list being, fairly mostly more recent shows i'm i I am familiar and a big fan of a lot of the older comedy shows as well all right challenge accepted (laughs) well let's see how you respond to that then uh last question before we really get into this this is one that uh this topic itself has led to a lot of debate over the last couple years and stan geezy comes in and says there is really only one clear winner guys is only that one, something that uh, only one, one winner? Only one clear wiener? Yeah. I, I'm trying to insert some comedy here. Come on. Like a, like a wiener that's translucent? Yes. Uh, <laughs> do we do we think that there's one standout comedy show from all time that is far and away the best of the best? It's hard to say because obviously... Enough. I mean, both of our lists are going to be... What do you say? 
Eight is enough. With the with the lady from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I know the lady. <laughs> you know, the lady. Um. Uh. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, news radio, but okay. Oh shit, that's a good show. I'm friends with you now. <laughs> I, I even, I even, they even managed to pull off the John Lovett season uh, really well. I thought, oh, yeah, that, that's because that John Lovett can do anything. Yeah, that that was on my first list. I took it off because oh. I, I took it off because people. I figured people would be like, "What's that? What the? Yeah. What answer? Great. What answer was that? That film nut said that. That was a minute ago. I'm not sure which one that was now. Um, Brian really wants us to smack talk each other, and I'll do my best. But I dropped well, out of acting school for a reason. Um, and well, I personally, I personally am excited to go up against Where's Waldo? The college years. <laughs> All right, you know what? All right. <laughs> All right. So what we're gonna do? I'm going to reveal the bracket that we are talking about for this specific round, and then. Uh, you all will see which one you're assigned by the initial from your first name, of course. One show will have a W, one will have a J. Um, will, you are going to go first as the individual that is uh, on the right. And uh, you're you're going to be the one that's defending this first one. And for anybody that hasn't seen these shows, we would like an explanation first of what the show is. And then, of course, follow that by why is this easily one of the best comedic TV shows of all time. Oh. Does that See, make sense? I already hate this because <laughs> I'm good at making lists, but I'm terrible at defending them. So go ahead. Let's well, go ahead. and remember, I took your list and not all 16 of your titles are left here. I assigned you both some curveballs that you did not pick. What Are the curveballs from each other's lists or ones that you just pulled off out of thin air? You'll, you, you'll see. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to get into our first one? I don't know. Cosby Show. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. First up, uh, Will has uh, has listed Looney Tunes, mm -hmm. and Jeremy will be defending extras. So, Will, you have the floor. I mean, what do I need to say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're going to do great at this defending the genre show. Well, look, um, the great thing about um, Looney Tunes as television shows is that they're endlessly repackageable. And they, they've they been in various forms of compilation shows um, since the late 50s. Um, so um, they have a proven track record of appealing to uh, every generation through um, uh, violence, violence. Um, the occasional grating racial stereotype um, and <laughs> and a stable of uh, really well-rounded characters that have that all have an edge to them. I think if you stack up the Looney Tunes to their counterparts at Disney, you'll see the big difference is edge. All right, that's my initial salvo. All right, that, that's your salvo. Uh, Jeremy, I, hey, I don't hear a lot of people talking about extras. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. Um, it um, it is a great show, though. Um, it uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I will explain the show as Will Dodson did, since he couldn't follow the rules. Oh, smack <laughs> off! Um, Go ahead, try to make Ricky Gervais appealing for all those people who don't who don't know what Looney Tunes is. You should have explained it, Doctor. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Extra is a show that ran for two seasons, sorry, I'm Ricky Gervais, where he is playing a, um, extra, or, uh, also known as a background actor here in Hollywood, um, uh, which, for anybody who is not familiar with that, it's one of the many hundreds of people on set that are sitting down at a restaurant and pretending to eat food in the background of the conversation that the two main characters are having and stuff like that. Um, and the whole show is basically just about him trying to become a professional actor. And he uh, is like talking, he has relationships with some of the other extras on set, like as friends and they're all talking and he, and then each episode has a special guest star, uh, somebody who plays themselves. 
and you know patrick stewart is the only one i can think of off the top of my head um <laughs> but a lot of great um guest stars playing versions of themselves really uh, exaggerated versions of themselves and uh listen it's british humor so right off the bat i love it um and uh very dry very sarcastic humor very real life type of humor uh for me very relatable humor as somebody who was once an extra uh, and background actor for many months uh or even many years i guess um and out of the all the ricky gervais shows that exist of which there are many um yeah there are <laughs> i would say it's his best um his best work in my opinion um and uh didn't stick around too long like most mo like most uk shows two seasons and they're out it didn't overstay its welcome um so yeah that's i guess that's all i'll say about it for now all right so uh we had somebody ask what exactly are we voting on that was sardis uh the the, the sad part here which is going to be difficult but you're gonna have to separate this you're now not voting on the show you're voting on who defended their show the best oh. God. And now, of course, we've got a couple different things that are going to make this difficult because uh, Jeremy went into something that's very British and a lot of people don't love British humor. And that was like his main first point. And then uh, Staffino came in and said, uh, I don't even consider Looney Tunes a TV show. It's movie cartoons. Obviously, it went into syndication. But is that uh, is that something that, you know, maybe maybe Will is uh, cheating a little bit here, bending I'll the definition. I'll defend of it. I'll defend it. First of all, it is spelled T U N E S. And um, if you care to look it up, Looney Tunes ran as syndicated shows on several television channels for decades. Now, if if people want to disqualify me and, and go for a show that I consider overly sentimental uh, instead, um, that's okay. Overly sentimental extras? That's my thing with Gervais, man. They're all they all end with the sentimental crap. He's like an asshole for like the whole season, and then the last show, it's like let's all have a cry. <laughs> uh, I won't argue with that. All right, I think so, life's too short. Life's too, sh too short was. I'll put that up there. So now in the chat, who defended their show better, and which show should move on to the next round of this tournament? Oh, shit. Right so, now, that's not a show. Uh, so we, we are going to go by voting for the person that defended it. Is it Will or is it Jeremy? In the chat, type Will or Jeremy. Stan and I are always on point on these podcasts, no matter what topic it is. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a show. Stan's uh, got fact. You can, you can Google that shit. I didn't, I didn't make it up. <laughs> oh no, Stan just voted for Will. I take back everything I <laughs> Well, to be fair, he said Will is winning me over. He didn't vote yet. Mm, that's true. <laughs> hey, we got one vote for Jeremy. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> this is this is going to be the high the high point of my night. I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Sam says neither one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not really doing a good job <laughs> so far, to be honest. <laughs> While this is true, uh, we'll see what happens next. Because um, this next one. Uh, th this is going to be a difficult one to to compare a little bit, but I'm interested in seeing how you pull this off. So the best wait, part about Looney Tunes really is that Mel Blanc did all the voices. Hell yeah! And don't forget the Carl Stalling music. Should uh, he use that as defense? And the fact that Looney, yeah, Tunes, to defend. Looney, Looney Tunes is is so uh, uh, variegated that uh, they can delete all their problematic characters and still have plenty of plenty of stuff to show um hey and are we will uh what no he's dead to me now <laughs> <laughs> um are we are we each defending 16 or are we each defending 32 16 oh, okay thank christ 32 well, would be insanity <laughs> all right we're we're going to round two and this is where we're going to throw our first uh little roadblock in your way uh, well, wait will did we, did we tally these up we we did. Uh yeah, we'll will won fairly oh. handily. Not a bit. <laughs> uh so our Either second said, vote. Like, Looney Tunes is a classic. <laughs> uh, Stan says I cannot debate either of these Yahoos. 
I'm sure well, he's good. That's, that's true. That's All right. True. Yeah, I don't doubt it. All right. Uh, second competition here. Will is defending Ali McBeal, and Jeremy is defending How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Here is how this one is going to be different. The first time you speak, you are going to be attacking the other show. So, Jeremy, the first thing you're going to do is attack Ali McBeal. And, yeah. Will, you are going to attack How I Met Your Mother. And you need to stop Googling, sir. I'm, I'm going to have to Google. <laughs> <laughs> do I go first? Yes. That's the point, Will. You had to be prepared. <laughs> I'm sure I can't be prepared for <laughs> An episode of Allie McBeal in my life. Boom! <laughs> Extras what? did not move on, Sardis. It lost. As you see in the top right corner, Looney Tunes is on the second row there. You're a little too zoomed in to see that, Ryan, to be fair. Well, you can see the word loon up there, right? I I'm trying to zoom in so that yeah, the other one's... Yeah, a loon, just like Will Dodson. <laughs> I'm trying to zoom in so that the other votes are a surprise. I know, I know. Here, um, there's Looney Tunes. Jeremy's being so extra. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, uh, obviously, Sardis is on my side with extras. Um, geez, <laughs> Allie McBeal. Listen, it's... Uh, Allie McBeal ain't no one's mother. <gasps> In season five, she is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to trash talk a show I've never watched in my life. I've heard about it. She's, Allie she's Hayden Pintieri's mother in season five. Well, Will is having oh. the same problem because he's never watched How I Met Your Mother. I might have to flip sides because I love Hayden Pintieri. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything about Callista Flockhart and Ally McBeal? I don't. Come on. Come well, on. you said here, it's weird because you just said to Will, oh, yeah, you were supposed to do research beforehand. I didn't have Will's list. How was I supposed That's to? That's the point. You're just supposed to know it. You're defending know, a genre. I know some things about it. I Allie know my people. shows. <laughs> yes, Ally McBeal did have that damn dancing baby meme. That's right. I don't even know that. All right, she Will, you can uh, you can attack How I Met Your Mother now since uh, Jeremy's invented, laying down his sword. She invented CGI. Yeah, but Will doesn't know how much her mother either. Go ahead. Uh, I know some things about it. I know. Um, You're not legally allowed to attack it because Bob Saget is the narrator and he passed away. That right. saddens me. That saddens me. Um, but I, I would feel no issue attacking Full House. Um, <laughs> uh, how I Met Your Mother inexplicably ran for what like eight or nine seasons eight okay and um uh, uh, J uh doogie hauser and jason siegel right <laughs> correct those are two of the characters yeah all right and um it's it's tired it's just you know a battle of the sexes thing and then the ending was so problematic You, are you familiar with the ending, Will? <laughs> it was like an apocalypse or something, and they yeah. got everybody. Yeah. All the mothers got wiped off of the planet, and only daddies were left. Right, and that is problematic to me. <laughs> you know, I don't want to get all political or anything, but uh, yeah, that's problematic. And I'm pretty progressive, but we don't have to get up on a pedestal about it. <laughs> well. Uh, now that we've done that, let's give a 30-second defense to their very empty attacks here. So, Will, why don't you defend Ali McBeal here for it's not 30... Going at all how Ryan planned. What well, this one, this one did, because I kind of expected neither of you to know either of these shows, and I wanted this one to be a train wreck. So, Will, right. you <laughs> <Success>. have... <laughs> this was a success, yeah. for sure. You have 30 seconds, and there's an actual timer. Go. Okay. Um, Ally McBeal, uh, 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 was a product of its time, certainly, but also was quite progressive in its, in its, uh, um, gender politics, its, its use of debates over political correctness, uh, its, uh, somewhat progressive views about issues around, um, sexual harassment and, um, what we might now refer to as girl bossing, um, all of its characters, even Robert Madden's were yes. well, well rounded. Those those things sound hilarious. Yes. Sexual harassment. Uh, Jeremy. <laughs> You're not supposed to attack. How oh, uh, who said I was an impartial judge? Start the timer. Go. 
How much your mother has no sexual harassment right up front? <laughs> it has tons. Uh, <laughs> the whole character of Barney is based around sexual harassment. I know for a fact Doogie Howser harasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in real life he's gay, so it doesn't count. <laughs> That's uh, not what that means. So, anyways, um, how much? What's what? How am I on time? You can start over. As far as I'm concerned, with your regressiveness. Time. <laughs> All right. That was uh, a train wreck. So basically. <laughs> That's like you wanted, apparently. Uh, like everybody now is here. going to vote. Did Jeremy defend How I Met Your Mother? Or did <laughs> Will defend <laughs> Allie McBeal, the sexual harassment episode? Let's Look, I want, I want five minutes. Sorry, five minutes? For mind. Allie McBeal. I'm sorry, Callista Flockhart does not deserve five minutes for the show. Yeah. I'm never, never <laughs> been on your channel again. That's my favorite show of all time. Uh, all right. We I'm are voting, voting in the chat. Is... Ring light? No ring light. Ring light? No ring light. <laughs> did ring Will light? defend better or did Jeremy defend better? I think that tied, which I think is the most accurate because we were both terrible. Media member I voted for me. What does that, Do I just pick the better show? Maybe. A lot of people are saying ties, so you might have to be the impartial vote here, Ryan. Stan got a vote somehow. <laughs> Ally McBeal is a great show. It doesn't need defending. We've got <laughs> one vote for each of you. Ooh, now there's two for Jeremy. Well, hell yeah. I'll give another 30 seconds to count. Listen, <laughs> Stan refuses to cast a vote. <laughs> if nothing else, Will won the last one, so I have to. <laughs> oh, so you're going for, like, uh, equity? Will? Yeah, got a little back and forth. It was like, vote for me for DEI reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Ten more seconds right now. Jeremy's ahead by one. Oh, of course, Alyssa got Will, so now it's a tie. I'm going to have to cast that tie vote. Five, four, Ross Perot. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. He was right. Oh, man. Three, two, I could go one. back for Ross Perot, too. All right, I, uh, I I apologize. I'm gonna have to cast the the winning vote here. Um, you'll well, you'll see who it was in just a second. Uh, but this is where we're gonna have our first uh, <laughs> first interesting uh, round here, and we're gonna make uh, you guys defend this one immediately again. Um, we're just gonna go to the elephant in the room and say, Will, uh, you're up first defending the Cosby Show. Did you call me an elephant? Did you pick this? Yeah, I did. And oh, Jeremy, I, you're going to okay. be defending Freaks and Geeks. Okay. I'm, I'm not defending Bill Cosby. <laughs> All right, Will, you're up. Let's cancel this round. Everybody just votes for me automatically. Will's trying to defend a sex predator. Don't uh, forget, James Franco's in Freaks and Geeks. Oh. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> Will Elvis Dodson over here. <laughs> um, all right will you're up cosby show all right well i would like to point out that um uh, despite the name of the show there are uh, additional illustrious actors <laughs> including felicia rashad <laughs> lisa right. Benham, michael J jamal warner tempest bledsoe uh, keisha knight pulliam and whoever played sandra um <laughs> a couple cameos by the adam sandler <laughs> that's right um, I, I thought for a, a long time about whether to include this and, and I, 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 uh, I, uh, I did not, I did not want to, um, uh, include any shows just because of their like historical importance, right? I was just looking at the comedy, not who was in it, just the comedy. And I think that the consistency of the writing the consistency and well, really evolution of the performances, especially by what may be one of the best cat, uh, uh, stable of child actors um, on any show, um, really elevated uh, the Cosby show. The um, unique opportunities they had to spotlight and platform um, historically important and historically um, under um, uh uh, seen uh, performers, um, you know, kind of enhanced uh, the comedy because it gave it gave people 
um, uh, performers' chances to to be seen in a comedic light uh, when they had not otherwise had the opportunity, perhaps had just been seen as dancers or singers and whatnot. Um, and the sheer popularity of it, um, which is normally not something that I would I would go to, but the the, the fact that it appealed to such a wide audience um, is, I think, you. <laughs> Uh, to to sitcoms, um, not just of its era, but but of uh, of of television's history in general. Well, Can you that. tell anybody that has never seen it, which nowadays I think is a lot more people than you'd probably think, uh, mm -hmm. what the show's about? Yeah, you know, like I brought it up to some students last semester when we were talking about um, uh, historical sitcoms, and um, a lot of people had never even heard of Bill Cosby. Like somehow, <laughs> lucky. Uh, yes. Um, so what's it about? It's about um, an upper middle class family. Well, actually wealthy. Yes. Um, a wealthy family, a doctor, an OBGYN, which, of course, takes on <laughs> residence, I recognize now. Um, an OBGYN and a, a high powered lawyer are raising their two, three, four, five children and um, uh, two of whom are, are already adult by the time we, we begin, um, in a brownstone in New York, and various hilarities ensue, especially when um, Theo wants to drop out of school and get a job like regular people. Well, thank you for sharing uh, that show that was named after a date rapist. Uh, Jeremy, uh, what, do you, what do you got for us? I don't know how I'm supposed to follow they, that. They weren't dates. Somebody even said, well, I'm convinced in the comments. <laughs> it was a very convincing argument, especially for a date rapist, Will Dodson. It wasn't a date. <laughs> He's a rapist. Just don't don't soften it with an adjective. <laughs> um, mean, meaning he drugged them. That That's just, colloquially what that refers to. Serial <laughs> rapist is my, yeah. the term I prefer. Um, my show has nobody slipping anything into drinks. That I'm aware of. Although some teenagers do get drunk. <laughs> but do they slip things into the drinks? No, just actual alcohol. Uh, Freaks and Geeks is a uh, great show. So ahead of its time that no one watched it when it was on and it got canceled after one season. Um, it uh, launched the comedy careers of several of today's great comedy actors, including Paul Rudd, Jason Siegel, uh, Franco, who is pretty problematic too, as someone just thankfully pointed out right in the middle of me trying to defend the show. Uh, and um, uh, who, well, the great Linda Cardellini, obviously. Um, but not only uh, in terms of launching comedy careers of actors, it was really one of the very first shows of two of our great comedy creators to this day, Paul Feig and Judd Apatow, who combined as uh, producers on this show um, and went on to create so many great comedies that we know and love to this day. Um, and not only that, it was a it was one of the it's one of the few shows, and this is why it's on my list, that expertly weaved real life. Uh, it read it did lead to the underrated undeclared. That's correct. Um, even more underrated than Freaks and Geeks. Um, <laughs> it it one of, it's one of the only shows in my book that almost perfectly weaves together drama and comedy in a way that almost seems seamless. While other shows maybe come close, there might be a little heavy handed on one side or the other. Uh, Freaks and Geeks just did it so seamlessly where it's like, you know, you, you didn't even, you know, one minute you're laughing, the next minute you're crying or, or feeling heartfelt. And it, the, all the problems were not overly dramatic that the characters had. It was all real life relatable stuff. And the characters were just so realistic and raw that, to you know, it was just so easy to relate to them. You know, when I watch it, I it's easy for me to slip in and feel like these people these characters are real people that I know and not just actors, um, which, you know, I think is easier for a movie to do sometimes and a little less 
are a little more difficult for a show to do. Um, but again, very ahead of its time. Uh, obviously now very much a cult classic in a lot of ways, but at the time it got canceled after one season. So sad. I will have to call it there. Uh, I do have to throw in one point. You said that Freaks and Geeks launched the comedy career of and listed many people, one of them being Paul Rudd, who starred in Clueless years before this, um, and also Halloween 6. But on top of that... I was just Paul, naming people in the show. My, so sorry. Paul Rudd is not in Freaks and Geeks, sir. Oh, no. He's, in, he's on Undeclared. I got him backwards. So, uh, which one see? are you defending here? I, 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 I'm confused now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I was getting at because I mean, uh, that that I, seemed a little problematic there. I'm, I'm defending freaks and geeks for the record. I just got mixed up on the cast. Oh, I didn't say a word about a different world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I have in my mind a very clear winner for this one, um, even though this. <laughs> personally is is a much closer fight than it probably should be uh and, and nobody knows who i'm talking about but uh i know this could easily about. go either one uh now we are voting who defended their shows better did will defend the cosby show better or did jeremy defend freaks and geeks better um uh, actually like, i would like to say i i love freaks and geeks i i uh i got into it because of the mystery science theater 3000 connection um, with with Joel and um, and uh, the first servo guy, um, and uh, I, I don't I wouldn't I, I don't mind how anybody votes. Uh, history will decide. I don't mind either because I also love the Cosby Show, and I don't even, <laughs> mind. I don't even care that he's a date rapist. Serial. And... <laughs> <laughs> I um, I uh, you know. Uh, personal life aside of that man, I, you know, as a comedian and respecting the history of comedy, I still have a lot of his comedy records. Um, his comedy is still hilarious. His show is still great and very historic for a lot of other reasons, as Will pointed out. So I am also fine with either vote. Honestly, of all the people who could have turned out to be a monster, I think I'm like the saddest about this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I convinced <laughs> Jeremy wins. <laughs> <laughs> We got I'm all right. So, by a score of four points ahead of Will, Jeremy has won this round. And oh, wow. freaks and geeks, Decisive. I think I won just because of Cosby, though. <laughs> I don't think I did a better job defending it, to be honest. Well, they managed to keep Franco out of the spotlight pretty well. They did, they did. Yeah. Uh, so for this next one, um, I think this is going to be very difficult for one of you, and I apologize in advance because I think I won sure. because my show wasn't called the James Franco show. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I love how uh, Sam keeps repeatedly voting for Will, <laughs> and then he said, "Kidding." <laughs> Just trying to make me quit. Uh, so I will go ahead. You didn't say there was a one vote max or anything. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. But uh, th yes, there yeah. clearly is. Uh, this next one is going to be difficult for one of you, I, unless you surprise me and you have seen your show. Uh, I apologize in advance. Um, we are going to keep this to 30 seconds to defend the show just to see this be funny so that oh, neither man. one of you can look up anything. Um, now remember, <laughs> genuinely, 30 seconds to defend the show. That's it. 30 seconds to defend. Will, man, you I are up. My hands are full of pretzel bites. How am I supposed to Google anything? 30 seconds. I can't even. I don't. What can, I don't know. Okay, 30 seconds. I can give you 45 and Jeremy 30 if you want. <laughs> no, keep the, <laughs> You know what? Give me 15 seconds. I like a challenge. Uh, all right. <laughs> I, I hope that this surprises everybody. Um, Will, you're up first defending Flight of the Concords. Ready? Go. <laughs> it's a good choice, though. Well, I'm the hip hop apotamus. My rhymes are bottomless. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> it's funny, you know, they got the accents and the voices and they make the songs and stuff. And there's cameos by some of your favorite alt comedy people. And, it, you know, there's the one guy was in The Hobbit. 
<laughs> Defending um, the show by saying the guy was in The Hobbit. <laughs> I think it was. The You're one that feel didn't feel a that... lot better about what I'm about to say in 30 seconds, Will. Wait, is that the one I haven't is that the one about the horse in therapy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jeremy, go. Go for it. Well, it's funny. Nobody in it was in The Hobbit, but uh, there's... I mean, that's uh, actually probably not true. There's a lot of guests. There's a lot of guests. Um, Listen, it's another show that really blends comedy and drama well, which is my forte when I'm looking for a comedy show. I know we're talking about comedy shows, but for me, that's a huge bonus on a show if they can expertly weave those genres. Um, And listen, it's talking animals. What's not... Okay, so <laughs> it was Looney Tunes all of a sudden. <laughs> hey, we already established that Looney Tunes isn't even a show. Not, so <laughs> it's a show that beat extras. <laughs> okay. Uh, funny enough, I lost my headphones for a second. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, so we had some questions. Did um, you happen to lose your headphones during? <laughs> my defending of bojack horseman because i could have another 30 seconds no true. thankfully it was when you were I, defending looney tunes I, I think you should give them another 30 seconds because I, I you should give them some time that was i don't know what I, uh <laughs> we had a question sardis says are these u.s shows and surprisingly yes even though flight of the concords is made up of mostly new zealand individuals yeah. which uh, is which is how i know he was in the hobbit this is true um, I think it's really okay. hard for our our audience to not pick the person based on the show. It, it would be hard for me to not pick on. But the whole point of this is who is better at defending the genre, and yeah. so you have to win them over with your ability to defend. And I'm sorry, Will, I, I have a feeling Did that you you're see not. What gonna... Stan just said? How was mine any more lackluster than Will? He barely got two words out. Well, <laughs> Will did attempt to rap. <laughs> that's true i'll give him points for that <laughs> um so now i will reveal the the sad part of this lots of people like uh sam just said i vote for jeremy but concords is brilliant uh stan says fly to the concords brilliant choice um this this was one of my choices i adore this show i think that this is easily one of the funny shows of all time and i took one of will's choices away and put mm-hmm. it in it was it was in my initial list of like, okay. oh. yeah, it, it almost made my list. It's a good pick. Hmm. Interesting. But uh, Concords is misspelled. Well, no, it's a musical group. Uh, a okay. Problem. Back off, grammar Nazi. <laughs> so we are voting. And uh, I ever tell you about how my ex girlfriend was a grammar Nazi? No, I'm the grammar Nazi. Did I ever tell you how no. much of a grammar Nazi I am? Yeah. I would always be correcting my ex-girlfriend's grammar. That's why we're in exes now. And she's my ex-girlfriend because I was always correcting her grammar. She's like, Jeremy, what's with all these red pen marks in my diary? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right. You please, know what? I gotta go and... vote in the chat. I'm sorry to cut Will off. We'll, we'll have your joke in a second. Vote in the chat. Uh, Jeremy defending BoJack Horseman or... Will defending Flight of the Concords. Please vote now, Will or Jeremy. Please feel free to vote for me based on that joke that I just did and not my actual defending of the show. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, my, my mom had to go into surgery recently. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Now she can't have periods and, and she's only got a semicolon. <laughs> I stand by it. That's a good one. I stand by it, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, it's a good writing joke. I like it. <laughs> Uh, we got one abstain. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Stan says grammar Nazis unite. Oh, yeah. Okay, we see where that's going. Hip hop apotamus. That's it. I was just trying to prove I had seen Flight of the Concords. <laughs> uh, so right now, Jeremy is up by two. I'll give it another 10 seconds or so. There's only two people watching. Wow. JK. There's <laughs> there's there's 31. <laughs> we have the, we have about the same uh same viewership as uh as a syndicated Cosby show. Uh that is a joke from my act, Stan. Thank you for asking. 
I, I wonder how good Cosby, Cosby does in syndication nowadays. I don't know if it even is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That one is going to BoJack Horseman. Uh, so, uh, how, how do how do we feel like we're doing at the moment? Um, I feel better that Will isn't doing a better job because I'm doing terribly. So it makes me feel better about myself and in good company. Um, and I think I'm also winning currently. So I feel good about that. While that's true, when we go to the next round, uh, because you can't defend against yourself, Will is going to have to take over some of your picks. <laughs> You mean Will's defending twice? Uh, he will defend against you. And you will get one show and he will get one if it's two Jeremy shows together. Oh, okay. Well, why am I going to defend a shitty show? <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it work, I promise. You don't. Uh, you like Freaks and Geeks, too, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or as I All like right. James Franco is problematic for the show. <laughs> well, uh, and you know, I also... Uh, I don't know. They had that. They had, they had that one episode about the about the uh, gender assignment at birth. Situation. I thought your needle skipped there for a second. <laughs> well, I just I, I felt like the show where they they kind of tackled the issue of of gender of, of gender assignments at birth was a little flat footed. I appreciate that they tried to do it, but I, I feel like Seth Rogen was probably not the guy to pull that particular thing off. Or maybe, maybe it was good that Seth Rogen was the one that was like, I don't care as long as you fuck me. Um, <laughs> that was a pretty good voice. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on to the next one. <laughs> All right, we're going to go on to the next one. Uh, this one. <laughs> I, I genuinely want to hear this in terms of defending it based on comedic history. Oof. Comedic history. Jeremy's yeah. going to say oof one more time when he realizes he did not pick this show. Uh, here we go. Either of them? Will is defending the Jeffersons. Oh, Jeremy okay. is defending Friends. Oh, I mean, at least it's one I've seen. Not average. Okay, so Jeremy, you're going to go first this time. Have you seen the Jeffersons? I know, I've seen the Jeffersons. I'm saying... Oh. I hadn't seen that other one that you picked. Oh, Alan McBeal. Well, it's the greatest yeah. show of all time. <laughs> Jeremy, you're defending Friends first. Go ahead. Now? I have 30 seconds? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a little more. Go ahead. Oh, okay, great. Could so, you have any more time? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Uh, so in terms of um, defending its history, I could be... Effect on comedic history. Oh, comedic history. Yikes, a Rooney. Um, it's, um, I feel like it's one of the first shows, you know, this is in the dawn of a new age of comedy television. And we're, and we're clearly battling two separate eras of comedy television here, which I'm sure is very purposeful of Ryan. And uh, Friends is, what, early 90s, right? I'm 94. Thinking, yeah, mid 90s. And so we're entering this, uh, what I believe to be a new age of, of comedy, of sitcoms that are, were less about what's going on in the world and things of that nature, such as something like the Jeffersons or All in the Family or uh, Sanford and the Sun, and more into the realm of relationship type, relationship comedy. I was trying to think of a different word. Um, and it's kind of one of the first, if not the first show of the era of a bunch of friends hanging out. I mean, the show's literally called Friends, but you have so many shows that came after that, that copied that comedic style, including shows that we've already talked about tonight and like How I Met Your Mother and that 70s show and things like that. And, um, this was one of the first ones to establish that uh kind of group dynamic um i could be wrong about that but it's one of the first ones that i can remember <laughs> um which again i think it's just it's um if it's not one of the first ones it was one of the first of uh i don't know what i'm saying anymore <laughs> 
can I only have can you can you just give me 30 seconds Ryan you're, you're such a Ross well I'll throw back out there too since you're going down that route uh I, the the controversy of 1994 is that living single which was a very black show premiered in 1993 with essentially the exact same premise friends is, well, friends is a remake friends is a remake of living single I I I uh I made Stan fall asleep. <laughs> but no, seriously, Friends is a remake of Living Single. Um oh, I did not know that. Um I uh though I have seen Friends, I'm not a huge fan of Friends, to be honest. So it's Just hard for me to defend it. Well, <laughs> you're gonna get a lot of votes now. All right, Will. Uh let, <laughs> let's go through the Jeffersons. Oh man, it should I should only have to say two words, and those are Sherman Helmsley. But I'll continue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, of course, is a spinoff, uh, one of the first spinoffs from the Norman Lear uh, juggernaut of, uh, of sitcoms, um, starting with uh, All in the Family, of course. Um, this, was, this was such a trailblazer in um, integrating social commentary into uh, jokes that are objectively hilarious. Um, this was the first, as far as my experience goes, this was the first show and, you know, it, I, I may be wrong on this, but this was the first show I saw in, in, in prime time that, um, uh, put racial humor in the mouths and in the, in the, in the like agency of, uh, black characters and Sherman Helmsley could spit fire, um, I would also defend Amen. That's how good he was. Um, uh, I don't know if you all have seen Amen, but if you have, then you're cool. Um, <laughs> uh, it was uh, again. I don't. I don't necessarily take historical importance into account, but um, I don't see how the Cosby Show happens without the Jeffersons. I think this was one of the. Uh, this was the first or one of the first. Um, shows about uh, black characters who are in middle and upper middle class um, economic situations. The dynamic between the characters um, is is uh, especially with Marla Gibbs as the housekeeper, and she got her own spinoff that was delightful. Two two seven um, after this um, was just electric. Um, the show was cast perfectly. The it went for like eleven seasons or something. And um, am I wrong on that? How many seasons? No, it went 11 seasons. I, I pulled it up. Um, uh, to go that long and to have writing and performances that are that consistent, give me a break. Hey, I got that. <laughs> All right. Jefferson's is fucking awesome. That's my defense. Well, two things. One, if we're actually three things. If we're talking specifically about historical comedy, Will Dodson wins. If we're, talking, <laughs> if we're talking specifically about who had the better argument, Will Dodson wins. <laughs> and because and three, if we're talking about, because Will Dodson tried to defend Flight of the Concords with a rap, I'll try and defend my show a second time with Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat. What <laughs> are you? I don't remember the words. Hey, hey, you know what? Paul Rudd actually was on this show. <laughs> <laughs> that's true yes yeah. oh uh friends launched the comedy career of mr paul rudd everybody <laughs> um uh, and whoever said i was a phoebe is 100 percent accurate i'm proud of i i'm just glad that uh people are pointing out a lot of the things that went into my choice of pitting these two against each other because even though they weren't necessarily from the same era they are mere opposites of each other in so many different ways uh i mean this was one of the, the, the quickest ways I went to it. Just opposite sides of New York. Um, the whole racial tension thing about it with a lot of the people that are against friends because of the complete lack of diversity in the show. Uh, the amount of uh, the amount of like genuine comedy fans that have come from both and the different types of comedy fans that have spawned are very different from these two. And it's it's sad that uh, the Jeffersons aren't still in the mouth of a lot of people that talk about comedic shows because it's literally brilliant. Somebody give me a 4K. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That would be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven seasons on four K, <laughs> and each season's like twenty eight episodes or whatever. Yeah. All right, all right, just a blue right there. <laughs> all right, uh, I I I feel like I just completely derailed Jeremy's uh, defense, but at the same time, he derailed his own defense. So, uh, anybody against me just giving the win to Will here for this one? <laughs> yeah, maybe. But then I sang Smelly Cat, so I think I should get at least two points or something. Okay, you can have two points. I can get up and do a Sherman Helmsley dance, but I don't think I think I'd be canceled from the internet if I did that. Ryan gave me two points, and much like whose line is it anyway, the points don't matter. <laughs> uh, I forgot to set up the buzzer though. I'm sorry. Is this is this whose line is it anyway, or is it at midnight? Is that I I have always wanted to do a show like at midnight. Yeah, yeah. I was on a sh- I was on an episode of at midnight. No in, shit in the audience. <laughs> But they did get to me at one point, and I went. Way to bury the lead on that one. <laughs> points. <laughs> uh, just says points Jeremy lost points like for that. Smelly Cat. Oh, man, I tried so hard. If only you had invented Post-its. <laughs> Is it because I didn't remember the words? Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat, what All right. are you doing here? What are they feeding you? Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, this next round. This is going to get a little interesting again, and you're going to see why, because these are uh, these are two shows that hang very much on their specific acting abilities. And you are... G- <laughs> Will's getting a refill. Uh, you are going to defend these first based on acting alone. And then we're going to go into a 30-second defense of the entire show. But I'm really curious to see what you say based on acting. And one of these, both of you had on your list. So I'm sorry that the other one doesn't get to defend this one. Especially because all three of us love the show. Uh, So Will, you're going to be up first on this round. Will, you're going to give us community based on the acting in the show. Do you see Um, what I'm up against here? You literally didn't give that show to me when I'm wearing my community shirt. That's pretty bad, Ryan. It wasn't my choice. I'm sorry. Who who made the choice? <laughs> uh, this is how it shook up. Because I wanted, I think you should leave to get more attention in life. <laughs> we wa- well, it does deserve more attention. But right. wait, we have to defend the acting? Yes. And that's where I think I think you should leave. It's really possible to shine up against community. You do? You- very different shows, but go ahead. Yep, very different shows on purpose. All right, go ahead, Will. Well, um, there's the cast. <laughs> it's on Will's list. Yeah, community was on both lists. Yes. <clears throat> so, so you've got one of the uh, greatest living uh, comedy writers uh, in in TV. Um, uh, along with one of the, along with one of the best casts, and and I would like to say in terms of their comedy experience and styles, um, a really eclectic cast. I mean, you had you had Joel McHale coming from um, uh, Talk Soup. You had uh, Allison Brie coming from like I don't know wherever she does improv. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You got well, always very valid defense words, whatever she does. <laughs> you've got, I mean, you know, I mean, and she's great. You've got uh, uh, Chevy Chase, who's problematic, but also um, uh, occasionally accidentally funny. I don't, I'm not a fan of Chevy Chase, uh, even before. Um, Ooh. Uh, and then, and then, uh, uh, North Carolina hero Kim, uh, Ken Jeong, um, uh, Jim Rash, uh, Venical Brown, Danny Pudi. The characters are so well-rounded, so three-dimensional, which is a synonym, um, <laughs> which means I said the same thing twice, which um, fits into the uh, uh, central conceit of having um, uh, multiple timelines um, and uh, repeated uh, scenarios, for example, uh, the annual paintball. I actually even like the season four situation. Um, the Yahoo season, which brought in Frankie Dart, who had one of the greatest quotes in the entire uh, show. 
um, uh, just tells you the quality um, of the show. She said she never hopes. Uh, Hope is the incest baby of. Um, uh, shit, I forget the quote. So, Way to lose the quote at the words yeah, incest oh. baby. <laughs> I lost it, dude. I lost it. Uh, Frankie Dart incest baby. Uh, I, I'd like to say that you're probably going to lose a couple points here for naming the entire cast and completely dis. I'm not saying. Okay, but Donald Glover deserves a special shout out. Um, Do you think I'm saving Donald Glover for the end? It sure is. Frick, seemed like you forgot him. You think I forgot Donald Glover? I, I mean, it sounds. You, like sir, <laughs> are America. You, sir, are America. I am saving Donald Glover for last. Okay. I, I want to get this. I want to get this incest baby quote. Everybody is voting. I mean, it's hard not. I don't even know what to say because as much. <sighs> okay. Frankie Dart in season six says, oh, God, no, I never hope. Hope is pouting in advance. Hope is Faith's richer, bitchier sister. Hope is the deformed, attic-bound, incest monster offspring of entitlement and fear. That is one of the greatest lines in the history of comedy, and I feel justified in looking it up because I want to make sure I got it right. Now let's talk about Donald Glover for a second. That young man is talented. <laughs> He brought such an easy charisma uh, to his role. And at that point, he was mostly only known for his stand-up, and he was kind of in the alt, kind of geeky um, uh, stand-up uh, genre. I don't, I don't know the technical terms, Jeremy. You can, um, but Well, he did, he did call himself a blurred. Right, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> Donald Glover could, in that show did more with his eyes than Chevy Chase did in the entire however many seasons they tolerated him, um, and, and and he managed to and he managed to kind of pull everything together in those early seasons, so that when he left to go on to do um, all the great things he's done with Childish Gambino in Atlanta, et cetera, um, uh, the show had had kind of um, found its footing, and uh, no, I looked up the quote. I wanted to make sure I got it right. There's a, okay. It's it's fairly clear this is improv for the most part. I think. <laughs> if you haven't figured that out yet, I want to I want to make sure that um, there. You know, there was another um, performer I didn't mention. Um, I think I did mention Yvette Nicole Brown, right? Yes. Oh God, she was fantastic. But Jillian Jacobs, yeah, who who is probably I'm obsessed with. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> she went to Harvard. She, she is so good in love. Yeah, she's really good in love. Do, do you want to, like, dox her? or? <laughs> no, she was so good in this show. And um, I think of all of them, she's, she's probably had um, the least exposure since Community. Um, uh, outside of love, tell me, tell me what I'm forgetting. Probably, I would say Danny Pudi had the least exposure. Definitely. Since. Well, no, he's in that other show. Oh, mystery or uh, uh, Mythic Quest? Yes, that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he hasn't done much else besides that. But he's still on it because it's, it's it's season four is coming soon. True. So, but I don't know. I don't know what Jillian Jacobs is doing right now, but she should be doing. Jillian this. Jacobs was in several movies that Danny Pudi did not get. Oh, good. Well, I would prefer that. Uh, in in the chat, if you could tell me what movies those are so I could look them up, I'd like to see <laughs> um, That was a nice dig. Uh, okay. Uh, Will has gone off the rocker here. We we got a lot about acting. Uh, we also I went got season four. I just went all season four. We got a lot about the actual show as well. Um, but <laughs> even though Jeremy seems like reticent to give up at this point, uh, I I really want to. Security is my favorite show of all time. It was number one on my list, and Ryan defiled me by giving it to Will. I, I understand I that. However, I think you should leave. I think has a real opportunity here to step up with the good defense because the no, show is brilliant. I, it's yeah, it's hard. It's a brilliant show. Okay, so two very different shows here. We're talking about one of the most original sitcoms sitcoms of all time uh with some of the best writing you'll ever see in the community and one of the best casts 
And then you got I Think You Should Leave, which is a sketch comedy show with a whole lot of people that you probably don't recognize. <laughs> although some few, a few familiar faces that you do recognize, Will Forte, um, a lot Odenkirk. of... Odenkirk. What did you just say? Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. A lot of people that are used to doing sketch comedy. Odenkirk, Ben Stiller show, The Birthday Boys, uh, Will Forte, SNL, obviously. Um, so a lot of the familiar sketch comedy folk uh, 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 make appearances. But the cast is led primarily by... Uh, Mr. Tim Robinson, who was also on one season of SNL, and um, somebody who ended up taking off drastically since this show. Um, not surprisingly, although he seems to be more famous than Tim Robinson now, even though the show's uh, made named after Tim Robinson. Uh, which is um, Ryan? You have his name, or do I have to look it up because I forget? Uh, Sam Richardson. Sam Richardson. Uh, who's been in a bunch of movies, uh, recent comedy films, and also has his own show, After Party Now, that he's the lead in, um, which is a Phil Lord and Chris Miller show, also very good. Um, uh, so it's primarily those two, and apparently they've been friends for a very, very long time and used to have another show that is absolutely hilarious called The Detroiters. Um, but it's just in an age where... I personally feel <laughs> in an age where I personally feel there goes my hero. <laughs> I don't even know what to do now. How am I supposed to follow that? Oh, man. Um, in an age where <laughs> Jeremy gets full screen for his passionate response to the Sardis. Um, <laughs> in an age where I feel the art of sketch comedy, at least on television, at least, has severely declined. Uh, a lot of the more recent years of Saturday Night Live haven't, for me personally, haven't been very impressive. Obviously, the 70s, when it first started, was the golden age. I also really liked the 90s a lot. And then it started going downhill for me. But, you know, I digress. We got some classic uh, sketch comedy shows like Monty Python. Um, the very underrated Mr. Show, obviously SCTV, all great options that didn't run as long as Saturday Night Live and get a bit overwhelming. Um, but my point is that 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 art that that type of show had seemed to have died out uh, as of late. Besides Saturday Night Live, which is just going to go on forever, apparently. And in comes this independent, straight to streaming. Um, Netflix sketch comedy show with, again, a lot of people that uh, primarily a cast of, of characters that most people are not familiar with and, uh, and by face or by name. And <laughs> um, and just knocked it out of the park because the writing is so strong and the acting is so over the top that it's just, it literally singles itself out from just about any any other sketch comedy show in existence. And <laughs> wow, I feel like I'm not rambling uh, any more or less than Mr. Will Dodson. <laughs> um, uh, but it does, it, it stands out because it's just so ridiculous and over the top. And, you know, sure, certainly sketch comedy shows have done that before. I would say most specifically Monty Python uh, of all of them. But it really just doesn't, it, it just is not afraid to go there with the most out there bonkers, ridiculous stuff. And by the way, one of the other things that makes this show as a sketch comedy show so brilliant is that it's all, it's all, the right, I already mentioned how strong the writing is, but the writing is so strong that you can that you can have a laugh out loud like crying laughing sketch in one location with like three people. Yeah. Many of the sketches in that show, they're in a, they're in an office, uh, like an office room, like I'm in right now. They're in uh, whatever one you know at at one like at the living room. Um, it, it, it's not relying on big uh, spectacles in terms of uh, scenery or environment. It's not relying on a huge cast of characters. Most of the sketches are primarily 
small. Um, <laughs> what? I'm glad I'm glad Ryan's amused. Ryan, oh, Ryan. Ryan. that's a lovely comment. Oh man, that was really funny. I don't know how I'm supposed to defend the show <laughs> when I'm being raped in the comments. Uh, anyways, it, it um, raped. sorry. <laughs> um, it's just um, it's it's another show that it, 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 I don't know I don't know what else to say. I think I defended it enough. It's 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 uh, not afraid to go to the absolute absurd. It's so over the top that and was. It's the it's the perfect mixture of over the top acting with brilliant writing combined together. Brilliant writing. I I, I remember one of my favorite lines: uh, "Slopping some pig shit with fat fucks." That was there. I remember that. Yeah. One. Brilliant. Have, have, have you watched all of? I think you should leave. Will that's that, like those those guys should teach a class. That now that's up there with your quote from the when come from community that you. No, it's not. Watch. Yeah, no, it's not that quote. That's that quote. That's life. <laughs> Will, that's Will, life have is. you watched? I think you should leave. Yeah, I saw some of them. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the one where the guy wanted to like. Uh, he was like taking a tour of a house and wanted to like find some place. Okay, to we're, we're gonna put this one in misery. Cause, Hold on, uh, I, I do want to say that. Despite however you think I, however well you think I defended it, which is probably not good based on the comments. <laughs> if if you get anything out of this broadcast, I urge you to watch this show, like legitimately. It's very underrated. Not enough people watched it. It's crying, laughing, funny. It's amazing for repeat viewings. It doesn't. It never seems to get old. So if 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 you if anybody watching it has not seen it yet. So, so, zombies ate my arms said Jeremy printed it. <laughs> so uh, Jeremy is like not it. helping right now. Um, I will just say uh, I I genuinely feel that Tim Robinson may be the best sketch actor ever um, just based on I'm his not performance. Helping it. I'm encouraging everybody to watch it. Well, you're well, not helping the defense for sure. According, <laughs> a lot according, of people have seen it. According to the Mark Twain Award for American humorist Adam Sandler is the greatest sketch comedian. Wait, say again. Well, according to the Mark Twain Award for American comedy, Adam Sandler is the greatest sketch comedian. Is that true? He didn't want he won a Mark Twain Award. Yeah, it was last night. Like, yeah, like yesterday. Anyways, oh, uh, so gonna we're gonna vote because this needs to get taken out behind the bar. Well, he did was, um, okay. Did Will uh, defend Community worse, or did Jeremy defend? I think you should leave worse. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> uh, who won this one? Did Will win or did Jeremy win? I think I know the answer. Uh, Will just, won. Just I think this won. is this is one where the show has to win. This was this is not fair to. Yeah, you know. can't compete. With I think you. I think I. I think you should leave. Is is really good, but come on, man. Yeah. I get. I got community. Yeah. I would not be disappointed if Community won, even though we're not voting on the show, but it deserves one. The whole point is that it's who is the better defender. Anyways, uh, we're going to go to the next one because I am uh, curious to see how this gets defended, and I think Jeremy's going to get pissed off again. Um. <laughs> you warned me about this prior to the show. That's why my stomach has been churning. all. Oh, uh, Jeff voted for me. That's nice. I got, <laughs> I got one vote. On that last, <laughs> so the, pretty close. The way that we're going to counteract what we just did is, uh, we are going to give thirty seconds to each of these shows. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeremy, you are up first to defend the Golden Girls. Go. I mean, Betty White, rest in peace. Is. <laughs> and then you got that other girl that was that other old lady that was in Grandma's Boy. Um, she's great. Um, and uh, you know, well, what's uh, it's this hurts one of the first shows to have all female leads, so you got that going for it. All right, Will, <laughs> uh, why don't you defend The Simpsons? Stop, I would have rather been Golden Girls. I'm a fan, yeah. Uh, The Simpsons is um a true innovator of animated comedy 
Um, it is um, um, uh, has been an incubator for great comedy writers for decades. Um, its uh, characters are iconic. Um, uh, its uh, scenarios are eclectic, and its cameos are um, variegated. However, uh, man, I, I really don't like The Simpsons compared to Golden Girls. I, I'll just throw that out there. I'll go. Um, I'll go Golden Girls all day. Say, it's not that I've never watched Golden Girls. I just haven't watched enough Golden Girls. I've Let me tell you. I'll I've talk seen, to you about Rue McClanahan for a little bit. I've seen some episodes here and there of Golden Girls. You you should probably binge it. It's one of the greater comedies of all time for sure. Um, not not to mention, it's genuinely one of the most progressive comedies. They they went there on Golden Girls. I like DC's comment. Will don't Dodson. <laughs> that that that's yeah, that's my life. Uh, all right, so we are going to go <laughs> straight into voting. Uh, remember, we are not voting for the show. Did Will defend The Simpsons better, or did Jeremy defend Golden Girls better? These 30 second things are tough. Remember, I did say rest in peace, Betty White. Well, they're all yeah, dead, dude. They're you all long dead. The other ones? I just don't know their names. Rue um, McClanahan. B. Arthur. Estelle Getty. Oh, yeah, B. Arthur. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm more of a fan of C. Arthur myself, but. <laughs> Give, gotta... make him, yeah, Ryan, make him defend Flipper. For shame. <laughs> Will you got more coming, Will? Um, uh, I can. Uh, DC says I am the B Arthur of the group. <laughs> oh man! All right, we got a lot of Will votes here, so Will gets the Simpsons. Uh, we are going to go into our next one, and we're going to make this one uh, a, another full-throated argument because this is one I'm very curious to see how you guys defend these against each other. Thank you, and Dan. Stan voted for me. This is the last on one side of the bracket. That's how far we've gotten. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah. Will, yeah. Will is going to be defending I Love Lucy against Jeremy's It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So, Will, oh, you are okay. up for That's a tough one. I feel better about this one. Yeah, so, you know. Three seconds? No, um, full-throated. Okay. I prefer, I like having 30 seconds. I, I don't ramble. <laughs> Fine, we'll go 45 seconds. That's it. We'll get a little more time because I feel like these d deserve a little more time. You can give us a minute if you want. I just don't 45, like... go. I've always I've always been known as a full throated individual. Well, you wasted eight seconds to say that. No, I wouldn't waste it. Look, Lucille Ball is the <laughs> grand dame of American comedy. She and Ricky Ricardo created a show that became the template for sitcoms to follow. Um, the the scenarios are eclectic, eccentric, um, and uh, at times um, incongruous. And her uh, performances um, melded the hysterical with the subtle in ways that have never been seen since. And did I mention Ricky Ricardo? Funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> Desi Arnaz. <laughs> and John Wayne was on one. That was funny. I liked the John Wayne episode. Uh, All right, Jeremy. 45, go. I, uh, <laughs> I would say in Philadelphia, uh, it speaks for itself that it's on its 18th, 17th, 18th season and still going strong. It um, totally takes the formulaic standard comedy sitcom uh, formula and just flips it on its head and makes us hate all the characters and yet somehow we also love them and uh, and and just the dynamic between everybody even though they're all being so mean and aggressive you can't take your eyes off of it and that's a testament to the writing of which is the, the also the creators and the cast uh, and just their dynamic with one another if I could say one thing, I, I think it says a lot that I Love Lucy is actually a more diverse show. Because it, it has had, it has had no episodes pulled for blackface. <laughs> I, 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 I just want to say, I don't know. 
That's because blackface was legal back then. No, I looked it up. There were there were none. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this this one is actually a fairly even fight to me. I, I think both of these are really really great shows. Uh, yeah, but what about our arguments, Ryan? Uh, I'm giving my feelings. Can I have 45 seconds? <laughs> yeah, as long as you time yourself. I am. Uh, I, I'm using my mental timer. You <laughs> spoke for 19 minutes on Tim Robinson's failing acting. Not failing acting, his unknown and and his. Lack oh, sorry. Your argument was failed about his <laughs> acting. I, I got that backwards. Uh, Harsh. <laughs> Um, both of these I think are brilliant and will have lasting lasting uh, legacies that are going to be a big deal for years to come obviously I love Lucy's been around for a lot longer Will I hear you it already has a lasting legacy yeah and I understand that we are in the midst of what is going on with It's Always Sunny however it has already broken lots and lots of records for how long it's been going I think It's Always Sunny has some of the most uh, amazing recurring bits out of any comedy show ever. The fact that they've kept some of the same jokes going for literally almost two decades is stupid good. Uh, yeah, this is this. If I was voting on, on shows, this would be one that would be very tough for me to. I just want to add that, uh, that the show was like created out of almost nothing, and that these three at the time known names that are now pretty successful in their own right for various things somehow got this show off the ground solely based on it being such an original idea and their brilliant writing of it. And not only did they get the show off the ground with almost nothing, but they got one of the greatest actors of all time, Danny DeVito, interested in the show after one season to then join the show and become one of the most iconic characters of all time, as Frank Don't don't forget, though, that um, Sweet D was originally a, a different actress who happened to be dating, uh, what's his name? The guy that got fat to be funny and then got skinny again? Rob McElhenney. Yeah, was, was dating Rob McElhenney. So the original Sweet D who went through all the original writing process and pilot and everything was then unceremoniously dumped um, after they broke up and then yeah. replaced with Caitlin Olson. Do you want to... And then really? they- Getting married. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a love story uh, built in heaven. Um, and I'm sorry, Will. Would you want to act all day with your ex-girlfriend? For 18 seasons. For 18 seasons. <laughs> well, I I would probably try to think ahead. <laughs> and not cast her in the first place. <laughs> but bed, bed. <laughs> this is a guy thing. I'm going to need you to... All right, uh, <laughs> we are going to go into the voting for this one. Who defended their show better? Remember, it is not what is the better show. Did Will defend I Love Lucy better, or did Jeremy defend It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia better? I agree with Zombies Ain't My Arm, by the way. That is gonna... a tragedy that it has not been like officially recognized in that way. That's true. It is a, a, a really great show. I, I'm going to get worse and worse. What are we on, eight? Yeah, what yeah. are we on? Jesus. Uh... Eight? Yes. <laughs> We've done 16 out of 32 shows. When we get to 16, I'm just going to be like, gosh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I Stan, truly you got to watch it. Yeah, you definitely got to watch it, Stan. I truly, I truly believe people in the comments are voting on the show. I got to be honest. I do too. So many people are like, I love Lucy wins, period. So it's like, I don't even stand a chance, no matter how terrible my argument was. I did my best, but I've only seen like, 15 or 20 episodes of I Love Lucy on like TV land when I was a kid. It's, it's, it's a great show. It was funny. I remember seeing it was fun, but like I, I didn't have, have on my list. I had, it's always sunny on my list. So uh, vote your conscience. I had all, I had, Oh, you had, it's always sunny on your list. Will? yeah. So did I. It's another, another double list. There were multiple crossovers. Yeah. Yeah. I, all right. I think our lists are pretty close actually. Like we're going to be friends, man. No, no, <laughs> No, <laughs> they, 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 they were not. Well, you're you can be friends, but they were not very close on the list. Why do you have to puncture like that? Uh, because I'm a realist. It's okay, Will. We can still be friends. Wow. 
after right. this. <laughs> Wait, since we're at the halfway point, can we do like a slight intermission where I can pee? Yes, 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 we can. I peed in a bottle earlier. <laughs> That's yeah, what he well, poured the refill from. When Ryan, uh, when Ryan put you I'm in the solo, when pro, when Ryan gave you the solo screen, I was like, oh yeah, you have peed, perfect timing. <laughs> I peed in, I peed in a bottle. All right, go ahead, Jeremy. All right. I'll be- <laughs> <laughs> So th- uh, th- this, this is not going super well. I sacrificed for the show. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Please don't tell me you actually peed in a bottle. Yeah, I peed in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I've done multiple five-hour shows on this already, and I've it, still... Unlike math nerd Jesus, I turned wine into <laughs> water. I hope he's wearing headphones and heard that. Math nerd Jesus. Yeah. Uh I don't I that might have to be what I change his name to in the stream now. They can tell you the square root of salvation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That was that was wonderful. <laughs> I I don't even know what to say. Uh okay, so how, how do you think this is going so far with your shows? How, I don't know. How's the audience feel? Are they having a good time? That's what that's what, that's all that matters, you know. Like of the, Oscars, the Oscars is so boring. I want this to be fun for people. Absolutely. Well, there you go then. <laughs> <laughs> Hipster Groucho marks at a weak letter. <laughs> Oh, man. so much funny stuff going on. Hey, this, this is, has been fun. Yeah, yeah. We should do, we should do this more often. Well, just wait. Whoever wins tonight might have to do it more often. Oh no! Are you gonna have like a battle royale? Maybe. Hey, you know what they call a battle royale in France? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hunger Games. Surrender. Uh because they always lose wars. <laughs> that was a history. Uh, Sibner says, why not movies? Um, the next episode that I'm already setting up is movies. Me and Flip going against martial arts movies. <laughs> Will is already feeling that wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going up on Flip. I'm going to start taking protein shakes. Uh, some rocky shit. I'm actually very excited for the next episode, and we'll have to talk about it after because it's going to be a wild one. <laughs> God damn! I don't think he's peeing, man. Uh, well, he is at his work office. To be fair, he he literally just stayed at work because he got off work right as the stream started. I'm at work. You live at work. I peed in a bottle. This is true. A sacrifice. For am sure. I not only am I still at work, but the bathroom's on the other side of the office? Dang, that stinks. <laughs> I'm making shitty reality television here. Will, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as I was walking away, I heard Ryan say, "This is not going well." But <laughs> didn't you want it to go badly, Ryan? In a on sense? certain rounds, yes. Uh, we <laughs> are going to get not overall like it is. <laughs> <laughs> Change his name to Jeremy Long P. <laughs> I did. I, I was holding it for a while. <laughs> I already did change his uh, one of his names. So <laughs> you you can change that. Wow, I didn't know you could change that. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are starting on the the second half of the bracket, and uh, this one we are going to. Um, yeah, we're we're gonna do this one uh, just off the cuff, uh, just normal. We're gonna go with forty five seconds again. Jeremy, you're up first. You're gonna be defending Thirty Rock, and Will, you're defending the Adam West Batman. Yeah. Jeremy, time starts now. Oof! Oh my goodness. Um, Thirty Rock. Uh, gosh, I don't even know where to. Be. Um. I don't know where to begin with Thirty Rock. It had a it had a great cast of characters, uh, all fresh from SNL. Um, 
and no blackface that that I remember. Uh, yep, they did. Oh, they did. <laughs> yep. Well, see, I'm all <laughs> my argument <is> already. <laughs> Usually, you're pretty safe saying a show did not do blackface. But apparently, with all my picks, I can't catch a fucking break. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> How did you get both of those back to back? Oh, man. It's your fault. I oh, know. It was perfect. It wasn't on my list. <laughs> the best part is it wasn't on Jeremy's either. Not on my list. Now, listen. I, I, I enjoyed 30 Rock, but it's been so long since I've seen did it. You? I. Huh? Did you? <laughs> no, I do. I, I actually have all the seasons on DVD. It's a good show. It just isn't at the top of my list, and I haven't probably seen it since it was on. And that was rough. I didn't even know what to say really to defend it. How do you how do you not defend it immediately with the words Tina Fey? Well, I did say fresh from SNL writers and actors, including Tina Fey. That, no, you didn't say including Tina Fey. That that well, sounds I, pretty min minimal. Tina Fey is included in that list, obviously. <laughs> All right, Will, 45 seconds with Adam West. Ready? Go. Can do. Camp. This show brought um, queer humor to the mainstream. Um, it brought it to prime time. It gave us uh, the opportunity to see actors like Vincent Price as Egghead, um, uh, Cesar Romero as the Joker, Burgess Meredith as the Penguin, and on and on and on. The guest roster um, each week was amazing. The performance by Adam West is iconic, absolutely iconic. The kind of thing that William Shatner had to have studied. Um, uh, Adam West brings um, a, a standard to camp seriousness that has never been exceeded. Um, he is the king of it's, playing it straight. It's the kind of show where you have to paint a mustache, and that's where we're at. Absolutely. I'd like to say that Paul is correct and Stan is also correct. <clears throat> and also, goodbye, Sardis. <laughs> Good riddance. <laughs> uh, Jeremy is not happy with Sardis tonight. Um, oh, I, I mean, mean Julie Newmar, yeah. I mean, he, so here is a good question that we can we can debate before we do our vote. Is Batman strictly a comedy? Because yeah. I I don't know, because um a guy dresses up bat and has a little dude with green underwear running around with him fighting crime. That shit's fun. You could argue that with a few of tonight's, uh, you know, like something like Community or It's Always Sunny are 100% strictly comedies. Is something like Freaks and Geeks strictly a comedy? I don't know. There's a lot of drama in it. Um, right. Well, all sitcoms have very special episodes. So, I mean, you can have serious yeah. stuff in a comedy. I, I, I would be... I don't. I challenge anyone in the audience to name something non-comedic in Batman. Rest. I, 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 rest I, I still consider it a comedy, though. And I didn't even get a chance to talk about how great Burt Ward was in that role. Talk about uh, two roles for actors who are born. All right, I just muted Will. He doesn't realize it. He had his forty-five seconds. <laughs> I unmuted him and he wasn't making sound. That was perfect. I loved that. Okay. So. I, uh, Bert, Bert Ward once came into the Red Robin I worked at in Hershey and I was his server. That's interesting. Did Hershey, it, Pennsylvania. Didn't Bert pretty famously keep living in LA for decades and decades? Right. He was there for some kind of uh, uh, convention of some sort. Hmm. He literally came into a Red Robin. Yeah, he had... Well, it was one of the only places to eat in the small town that I was from. <laughs> Still, that must have felt some kind of way. Did you offer him a, a bat robin burger? I offered him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> or so. <laughs> okay. Did Jeremy or Will defend their shows better? Uh, Jeremy defended 30 Rock. Will defended Batman. I didn't um, actually defend 30 Rock. This is true. <laughs> Frank Gorshin was so fucking good in that show. Please vote in the chat. I'm going to fall asleep to Batman tonight. It also, also, I kind of want to throw out there, Batman the movie, very underrated. Oh my gosh. Like, extremely underrated. So good. We'll leave inconspicuously through the window. DC is right. DC is right. <laughs> points just for that. <laughs> 
Hey, I defended the Cosby Show, though. Okay. That's a different kind of blackface. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should laugh. <laughs> That's like the, the tagline to tonight. Uh, I'm not sure if I should laugh. <laughs> yep. Jeremy. Jeremy. For the Cosby Show, did, did you smell this napkin? <laughs> Jeremy, we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing to Will that we've done to you a few times. So we'll uh... blackface show. <laughs> You're gonna give me Amos and Auntie. <laughs> wow. Wow. Ben Tropic Thunder, go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we are going to go into <laughs> so man. <laughs> no sweat, Stan. This one's gonna be interesting because they they are not very similar at all. Uh, Jeremy, you're going to go second on this one. Will's going first. Will, you're defending Spaced. 45 oh. seconds. Oh, hold on. Before you start the clock, I need you to tell me what that is. <laughs> it's a great show. Right. Can I Google it? It's the Edgar Wright show with uh, Simon Pegg. Prior, it's basically the Cornetto trilogy prior to the Cornetto trilogy. It's Simon Pegg. You're Edgar saying Wright. words that could be, I don't know what language you're talking. Cor Cor Cornholio? What? Cornetto? Cornetto trilogy is known as Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. Those three movies. Wow. Have you seen those? Yeah. They're called Cornetto? It's, it's called the Cornetto trilogy. Cornetto trilogy. It's called well, technically it's called the Three Flavors Cornetto trilogy. Yeah. Huh. In right. in the UK, so they have a type of ice cream called Cornetto, and it comes in three different flavors. And when Edgar Wright went out to make these three films, with both uh, Simon Pegg and uh, Nick. what Nick Frost, that's his name. Um, they He saw it as basically three different flavors with the same actors, so he called it the Three Flavors Cornetto Trilogy. So is this like a Red Dwarf type of show? or uh, No. It's not... not... I mean, it's a similar style of humor, I'd say, as Red Dwarf, but not the same in premise or anything. Um... I, I almost feel like you should have tried to just defend this with the word spaced and yeah. we should have just not told you anything. No, I, I looked it up, but like all the only word I could see real quickly was squat. <laughs> so I'll start with that. Uh, I, I do want to throw out that many, many in the comments are very happy. Uh, I, I will also say in my defense, this was my choice. Uh, I love this show. <laughs> I, DC is talking about Will, right? Not me. <laughs> I mean, I, I saw those movies. Um, I just didn't know that they were a, a trilogy of ice cream. They are. You didn't, um, didn't know that Space came before that and was kind of the establishing factor for those films. With yeah. that oh, how interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a... Uh, all right, this is the this is the guy... This is the guy that has to watch uh, Point Break and uh, Bad Boys. Yes. Okay. And Hot Fuzz. Yeah, he has to watch them. He's the watcher. He's not the fan. Okay. Uh, Jeremy, what? why don't you tell us about Futurama? No, no, wait. When, when's my clock going to start? Oh, uh, It started a long time ago. You want 45 seconds? I'll give you 45 seconds. Yeah, I'm going to defend space. Oh, my God. Edgar Wright? Are you kidding me? <laughs> This guy loves ice cream. And you know what else? You know what he hates? Squatters. <laughs> and the best way to uh, uh, preserve ice cream and prevent squatting is to go to space. And in doing so, uh, Edgar Wright brings a, a stable of, uh, of, uh, in, of cutting edge English comedians to um, engage in wordplay and the occasional um, bodily humor um, situations, um, but in, but in space, and so that that makes it even because of the gravity. You know what I mean? That shit's funny. That shit's funny. I want to say two things. One, Will defended that rather well for knowing nothing about it. Actually, yep. I'm very impressed. Number two, they are not in space. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but space. I, I'm glad that my gamble paid off here and I put spaced against Futurama, hoping that Will had never seen spaced and would think that it was in space. So I think <laughs> I win. You got me. <laughs> yeah, 
All right, Jeremy, give us why Futurama is brilliant in 45 seconds. I could do it in 10. One sentence. The Simpsons walked so that Futurama could run. The, the show that Matt Groening created after The Simpsons is literally taking everything you love about The Simpsons and amping it up to 12. Uh, it's The jokes are funnier. The writing is smarter. There's some really fucking dark, not dark, but moments that are like almost so heartfelt that you cry, um, which is surprising. Um, and uh, to, I think in, it, it's 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 one of the, if not the greatest uh, adult cartoon shows of all time out of uh, that particular genre. Well, uh, let's see what the voting's like in, in the comments. Did Will defend space better than Jeremy defended Futurama? Give us the name Will or Jeremy. Remember, you're not voting on accuracy. <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> and you're not, also remember, you're not voting on what kind of degree we have. Ooh. Oh, man. Public, I'm a public school. It doesn't even... It hardly, <laughs> hardly counts. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> Will has two votes. Like my parents, <laughs> my parents aren't proud or anything. Travis just really doesn't like me. <laughs> I know DC likes me. Travis must not like me. <laughs> Paul, thank you, Paul. Paul is standing for the integrity of the show. Voted Jeremy, though spaced is the better show. Mm. All right. So one, two, three for Jeremy, two for Will, three for each, four for Jeremy. All right. It looks like Jeremy just barely got it. I think I think Stan was the decider. Thanks, Stan. Thanks, Stan. That was pretty damn close, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. When Will doesn't know a show, he still gets much closer to <laughs> than I do when I don't know a show. <laughs> so uh, this is going to piss uh, some people off because when we had the sketch show earlier and Jeremy was so uh, upset, I I really wanted to have it not be in that and it be up against one of these shows, but this was the the perfect two sets to put up against each other because I think that one of them is going to have a longer lasting legacy than I think you should leave. So Jeremy, you're up first. You're going to defend Nathan for you, and Will, you get to defend Saturday Night Live, and uh, this one you're going to have one full minute. And I want to hear not only why you are defending the show, but why specifically it's better than the other show as part of your argument. Your time starts now, Jeremy. Nathan, for you, is really one of a kind, I would say. It, uh, it takes a... Uh, a uh, I, thank you, Travis. <laughs> I'm using up my time to thank you. Um, a very, uh, I think, uh, not very well known at the time, Nathan Fielder, uh, comedian and sketch comedy actor, and uh, and the premise of the show, for those who don't know it, is in the most completely serious way possible. He goes to different businesses or different people, and uh, and tries to help them with a problem, and his way of helping them is the most ridiculous possible thing you could ever think of in the most roundabout way. Um, it's better than Saturday Night Live because it hasn't overstayed its welcome. And it's, uh, honestly, it's just, uh, I think I said it in one sentence. It's one of a kind. There, I don't think there's another show like Nathan for you, period. Uh, before Will goes, I haven't watched, have you, either of you watched the rehearsal yet? I haven't seen anything from it. Is it decent? I have. Yeah, it's it's um, very different from Nathan's and from for you, but the same kind of humor. So, we all right, Will? <laughs> okay, one minute starts now. Go. Oh, uh, forgive me, but I thought the whole premise of Nathan for you was that he overstayed his welcome instantly. I thought that was like the whole pitch. He does not the show. Okay, well. So the thing about Saturday Night Live, or as the kids these days say, SNL, um, is 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 that <laughs> is that it's 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 longevity ensures us that that a lot of it sucks. In fact, you can say most, 
Um, but the, but his longevity also um, assures us that uh, some some of the greatest comedy moments in history have happened. And let me just sum up those comedy moments in two words: Norm Macdonald. Um, in addition to that, um, the few things that Adam Sandler has done that are funny also occurred on Saturday Night Live, um, <laughs> and uh, and that's that's to be appreciated. Ah! The 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 cast, the hosts, the music. Silent Live, iconic. You can't top it. Sorry. Let me let me quickly have a cliff note from my earlier comment. I'm not saying Saturday Night Live was never good. There's a lot of Saturday Night Live that I love, including and especially Norm Macdonald, Mr. Dodson. Um, but I just think <laughs> now what? He's a doctor. Oh, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I'm trying to diminish your achievement as a form of the pack. <laughs> as I said before, I, I, my dad is Mr. Dodson. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually do also agree with Travis. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think the rehearsal is better than Nathan for you. Uh, crazily enough. Um, even I think though, that supports my argument, though. Even though it's drastically different. <laughs> No, it just means Nathan. It just means Nathan Fielder is better than current Saturday Night Live. I will say, and this is going to totally. Well, I'm not going to say it. Let let the people vote first. <laughs> I will say the final episode of Nathan for You is one of the best episodes of TV of all time. It absolutely is, and I will also just say that my favorite episode of Nathan for You is the one with the Best Buy TVs or the and the price <laughs> alligator. <laughs> There, you will, that's my point when I said one of a kind. If you watch, just take that episode in particular and you will never see anything else like that on TV. Yeah, but what about that one time when Jim Carrey played the lifeguard at a kiddie pool? Uh, you're thinking of In Living Color. No, I'm thinking of SNL. <laughs> Shall I post a link in the chat? <laughs> Uh, before we vote one question to uh, defend or for or against your choice the, the common argument with Saturday Night Live is that everybody thinks that every era of Saturday Night Live sucks except for when they were in high school so hang on a second real quick exactly what Stan just said is what I was going to say and then I second guessed myself and I said I'll wait to say it but since he said it I'm going to say it now even if it makes me lose. It's very hard, despite how much I love Nathan for you, and even though I love certain parts of Saturday Night Live, I don't really, I haven't really liked it for the last several years. Um, it is very hard to pin up against how long of a uh, standing that a show like Saturday Night Live has had and how many. Listen, I'm, I'm doing my best. 32 shows are really hard to pair together properly. <laughs> so, so iconic. Though. I'm not so saying many... it's your fault. And if anything, it makes it more challenging. I'm just saying I agree with Stan. And that was the point I was going to make is it's a very difficult comparison to make an argument against when Saturday Night Live has been going on for so long and so many iconic performers have come out of it. True. And, and they also, they also corner the market on cringe humor. Like, that time that John Frusciante fucked up the chorus of Under the Bridge um, and made Anthony mad. There was, yeah. the, there was, the, there was the time that uh, Will Ferrell um, shouted the N-word like eight times. True. As Robert Goulet. Um, <laughs> Robert Goulet. <laughs> there was the time um, there was the time that everybody was on coke for like five years. Okay, so... In my defense, one of the things that I was getting at with my question that we just skirted past is basically <laughs> what Justin just said. Nathan, for you, is gold for three straight seasons. SNL is less than one good skip per episode, according to some people. Uh, but that's my question, is a lot of people, they view SNL as only being good for three to five years. Nathan, for you, is a perfect three years. Yeah, so and then... And, and it came, it, it went in and went out. Nobody gets hurt. Well, I mean, let's see how history views it. I mean, the thing, the thing about Saturday Night Live is, is you have forty years, 
and you can go through every season, even the even the Robert Downey Jr., Anthony Michael Hall season, where everybody had three fucking names. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus was on that season. Even the three name season, you can find a, a classic sketch, pretty much every episode. And and for the record, I was in college when Norm was on, um, and also I want to. I was in elementary school. Oh. I want to shout out to Zombies Ate My Arm and and just say the words Phil Hartman because yeah, God, that, God bless Phil Hartman. Yeah, that should actually should have been my argument. Yeah, Phil Hartman, Norm McDonald, four words, it's over. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> the moment you said Norm McDonald, Jeremy Jeremy got rattled. Uh, you, yeah. Man, I, I almost I put I had a, in my first list I had a minute with Stan Hooper, which didn't even actually air. Yeah, I love a minute with Stan Hooper. Isn't that fucking like great? Greatest season finale ever. Yeah, yeah, it's so sad that 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 mm-hmm. never actually aired. Um, uh, Will probably knows, but Will, you know, Norm Macdonald is my reason for being a comedian. So I almost can't even argue against Saturday Night Live because of that. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't know that, but I tell you what, man, um, the first time I saw him, uh, and he and he told that joke about chopping up his family and putting them in a in a plastic bag, I was like, this is my kind of comedy. Yeah, yeah. All right. Before yeah, anybody he gets there, you got fired. Before else gets their feelings hurt, uh, let's go through and vote. Uh, did Jeremy defend Nathan for you better, or did Will defend Saturday Night Live better? Oh yeah, when Frank Zappa hosted, that was the best. Holy shit, he was so he was so just like, oh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Zappa man, Zappa was the best. I remember <laughs> three perfect seasons compared to. 40 mediocre seasons. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget, even mediocre seasons gave us things like cork soakers. Are, right? well, and are we almost up to 50 episodes, 50 seasons? Yeah, I think we are. I think we are. 40 was like 2015. Now they're just casting YouTubers and stuff. It's getting it's getting wild. I mean, that's the, the new face of comedy, to be honest. Yeah. But hey, you got a shot, Jeremy. I'm not a YouTuber. Holy shit. That was a dark blow. Oh, man, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm just saying this is a platform where you have an opportunity to shine. We are currently tied 3-3. I need at least one more vote. Oh, come on, people. Are we? Yep, there's 4-3. Chester gave it to Will. And he says, even though he brought up Adam Sandler. <laughs> I'm just reporting the news, man. I'm just reporting the news. Quick, somebody retie it. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, but while I'm going to, to mark the winner, it'll probably happen. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. All right. So this That's one, like I the closest one yet. We actually Yeah, that, that was very close. Uh this next one I think is much more even. Uh, Jeremy, you're going to go first to defend Police Squad while Will defends Veep. I fucking love Police Squad. <laughs> and Jeremy not- wins. All right, good job. <laughs> yeah. All right. That should you've be taken into account. Thank you. You've got 45 seconds, and your time starts now. Listen, anybody who likes any kind of the very specific, uh, over the top, absurdist humor that was birthed. It was all birthed from Police Squad. Um, it's obviously where Naked Gun came from. Naked Gun from the files of Police Squad. Um, but really anything Zucker Brothers, uh, Top Secret, Airplane. If, if you're a fan of any of that, those movies or that style of humor, it, came, it originated in Police Squad. Um, one, two words, Leslie Nielsen, rest in peace. Um, one, of the, one of the ultimate kings of comedy um and uh you know at the time there was nothing like police squad uh it was in that era of shows that we mentioned earlier in this uh broadcast and it, oh i'm out of time right now. yeah okay will I hit us I- with some veep well don't forget the zucker brothers authors also brought us an american carol the uh <laughs> neoconservative the, look all i got to say about v <laughs> amando Iannucci or however you say it. I mean, uh, when Dan Bacchanal says to his uh, his uh, rep, rep aide, um, uh, shut up, you fat girl. 
um, it, 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 it just sums up the um, um, mean, um, um, concise, and precise um, uh, satire of um, uh, representative democracies, republics, American, American politics. The show is impeccably cast, impeccably written. Everybody is a highlight. Uh, this one is tough. These, yeah, these Joe, are two... Dante, Joe Dante directed several episodes of Police Squad. That shit's good. The great Joe Dante. I'll be happy with the tie. How can you vote against a show? How can you vote against a show where Leslie Nielsen uh, says, cigarette? And the response is, I know. <laughs> Don't uh, forget, Anna Chlumsky made a comeback. Anna Chlumsky. It, she did make a comeback on that. The girl who killed Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, we are going to go to a quick vote on this one. So those that thought Jeremy defended Police Squad better, please say Jeremy in the chat. Those that thought Will defended Veep better, please say Will in the chat. You, DC. According to DC... Will brought up Joey Louise Dreyfus in the wrong show because he brought her up in Saturday Night Live and that lost her season. <laughs> I didn't think I needed to bring up Joey Louise Dreyfus. Besides, I wanted to highlight the ancillary characters. So she was the lead. She's a she's a trust fund baby. You know, she she's has... the Emmy winner. <laughs> yeah. Well. Mm. Oh, Anna Chlumsky never left DC's heart. Yeah, I'm, I, I wanted to highlight. I wanted to. I wanted to give platform yeah. to the marginalized characters. She's your girl. <laughs> uh, I remember seeing my girl in the theaters uh, when I was a kid, and like when uh, when I found out that the movie was about a kid hanging out in a funeral home, and uh, and then Macaulay Culkin gets killed and stuff. I got pretty pretty upset. That was that was PG meant something different back then. That's true. It was drastically different. <laughs> All right. Police Squad and Jeremy has won this one. Another, another uh, the common theme with my shows are they're all short lived. <laughs> Police Squad was on my list and Veep was not. Yeah. Police Squad was on my list too. It only lasted six fucking episodes. So devastating. This next one uh, is another one that they are very similar, but this is going to be an impassioned speech from both people. So, uh, we are going to talk about not the ancillary characters. There is one person in each of these shows that you're going to highlight because their name is in the title of the shows. Right. Oh, you know shit. who did your defense. Louis, aren't you? Was this on my list? Yes. Damn it. Except it's the character's name, but you know who we're talking about. Uh, I'm confusing Jeremy like crazy. <laughs> You'll know in just a second. In the Will, show? Yes. On my list? It's, it's giving you like the Valerie Harper show. Yeah. Okay. Is it? Oh, 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 I did this to you, didn't I? Okay. Yes. So, Will, you are up first. You got 45 seconds to defend specifically about the late show with David Letterman. Letterman himself. Ready? Well, I thought. Go. I thought he handled his uh, sex scandal well. <laughs> but, um, Great use of your forty-five seconds, <laughs> and uh, and that's that's something to be taken into account. Look, the Late Show, with and this is the Late Show. This is not Late Night. This is the NBC show. This is not Late Night with David Letterman on CBS, which is actually when the sex scandal occurred. Late Show with David Letterman innovated uh, uh, the the format and the art of uh, late night television, the skits, the uh, comedic bits, the non sequiturs, the top 10 list, the uh, rapport with guests, all of this was different than and edgier than any show before and possibly since. Jeremy, Larry Sanders show, give us the love for Gary, San Gary Chandling. Gary Shandling is a comedy innovator. Between the Gary Shandling show, also a name in the title, and the Larry Sanders show, he took, he did he, twice, back to back, he uh, took um, uh, 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 formulaic 
a formulaic style of a comedy show and flipped it on its head. Uh, obviously, Larry Sanders' show, he's parodying and mocking everything that Will just defended with the late show with David Letterman. Um, but in good jest and in good company with several um, uh, great comedic actors playing themselves, including David Letterman. Well said for both of you. I think this is the better, this is one of the better defended one from both of you. Gary Shandling, rip. Judd Apatow made a documentary about him. That's how good he is. <laughs> that, for many people, that would be an argument against. Um, yeah, Judd, Ap Judd Apatow makes three-hour movies with Adam Sandler. He's like he's like the Paul Thomas Anderson of comedy. Hey, funny people is good. Funny people okay. really underrated. <laughs> I, I don't give a shit about rich people, man. My um, my friend, I'll tell I'll tell you a quick story since we brought up David Letterman, and I don't think my uh, my dear friend Frank Catola would mind me sharing this, uh, and he'll probably never see it. But um, Frank Frank once told me, "Oh, great, make me big." Uh, <laughs> he once told Sorry, thanks. I uh, I will take this opportunity to say I made a documentary all about my dear friend Frank Cotolo, uh called Tenacity and Gratitude, the Frank Cotolo story. Um, available all places DVDs are sold. Um, <laughs> not released on 4K. Um, and uh, it's all about um, Frank's journey in Hollywood, who um, he was a, a writer for a lot of famous comedians. He was a joke writer for a long time uh, before kind of landing in his uh, longtime role as the head writer for the great Wolfman Jack uh, for the majority of Wolfman's career and was even his on-air uh, radio partner for several years going under the pseudonym Mars Cotolo. But uh, before joining forces with Wolfman Jack, he was a joke writer and uh, told me a story. I don't believe it's actually on the documentary, though, um, about... Uh, how his two basic two ways of making money back in those days in, in the late seventies in Hollywood uh, was either going to the comedy store and selling jokes or going to the horse track and betting on the horses. And one Saturday night uh, he tried, he, he decided to go to the horse track, which he, of course, I think we would all know is an odd choice. He specified because Saturday is a big night for comedy uh, and one of the best nights that he would sell the most jokes, I assume um, but he was feeling lucky and decided to go to the horse track. And uh, that feeling paid off because he won big that night. And uh, all the comedians at the comedy store would end up going to this one Rouse on uh, Sunset Boulevard, Rock and Roll Rouse. Ryan might remember because he used to live out here. And uh, they, would always, uh, they would always end up there and everybody would run into each other because they would all be there at like three in the morning or four in the morning after the comedy store closed and everybody was done smoking weed and shooting the shit. And uh, so even though Frank did not go to the comedy store and sell jokes this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this particular night, he still ended up at the, at the, at the Ralph's getting his gro weekly groceries. Um, and uh, because he hit it big, so, so all the comedians uh, from the comedy store would all bump into each other in the generic style because they were all making absolutely nothing and had no money to afford groceries. And Frank hit it big that night, and he saw Fr Dave Letterman in the generic style, and he said, Hey, Dave, look, Del Monte corn. Hey, Dave, <laughs> look, Kellogg cereal. And Dave said, Fuck you, Frank. And that's my David Letterman story. Not my David Letterman story, but <laughs> we just took that journey to get to Del Monte Corn. Yeah, uh, you know the payoff was <laughs> okay. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Okay, so we are voting now. Did Jeremy defend the Larry Sanders show better, or did Will defend the Late Show with David Letterman better? I screwed myself with that story. Please don't judge based on the merits of the story. Yeah, please. Judge. Fucking fucking Jeremy's working on the David Letterman beard at this point. He's like halfway there. <laughs> He's like, my next guest needs an extremely long introduction. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good one, Will. I love how Will gets better at comedy the more he drinks. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, you should ask my exes. People are going to vote because they didn't like my story I just shared. <laughs> so they're going to vote for Will. God damn it. 
I don't I don't have any Gary Shandling story. Wave it's, said, I just got here in that last story. Um I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right, we got <laughs> here on out. Uh Jeremy is currently winning. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> All right, so it looks like Larry Sanders is going to take this one. Good I got to say, I, I originally was going to go with Conan O'Brien because that was my generation, and I was going to do an impassioned um, exposition on the masturbating bear. But then I was like, you know what? I want to be tasteful. Oh, look, Chester said me, but he prefers Letterman. Thanks for voting for me. <laughs> all, all right, so these next two, I apologize in advance. There, There was no... Great way to set these up. Uh, it feels like they are bound to go to very specific shows. Uh, so I'll apologize in advance. We're going to make these 30 seconds. Jeremy, you're up first to defend Parks and Rec. And Will is going to be defending Archer. Uh, Jeremy, you're up first. And your time starts now. <laughs> i got to be honest. I only put this on my list because my friend Jim O'Hare is in it. As Larry, Jerry, Gary, Gergich. And in case he watched this, I would feel bad if it wasn't on my best comedy list. Um, uh, it is a great show. Um, it's obviously, um, I would say, in my opinion, well, oh my God, I'm running out of time already. Obviously, The Office had a UK version of The Office where it originated. But with Parks and Rec and The Office being very similar shows, I would say The Office walked where Parks and Rec, so Parks and Rec could run to use a similar argument I did earlier in the show. All right. Will, Archer, ready, go. Well, let's talk about the consistency of writing. It gets better and better uh, with every season. Phrasing. Uh, the, ca <laughs> <laughs> the cast is incredible, from H. John Benjamin to the late Jessica Walter. Let's not forget that J.G. Thurwell is the composer of the music um, from season seven to now. Um, and... Uh, it's about an alcoholic uh, a libertine who is the greatest spy in the world. That shit is funny. <laughs> We're at the point of the show where Will's argument is, that shit <laughs> is funny. <laughs> you know, very compelling argument, I gotta say. It's I, was not, true. I was not on IMDb. Coming from the doctor. Oh, was that one that wasn't on your list? No, Archer was on my list. Okay. I knew that shit. Then why'd you need IMDb? I wasn't. DC oh. Ibner accused oh. me of being on IMDb. I was Sam, actually... Sam Newman joins an hour later and he immediately votes against me. <laughs> I, was, I was actually looking up... I was looking up some Parks and Rec stuff because I was going to try to make a uh, British version of Parks and Rec joke, but I couldn't get it together. Oh, I appreciate the effort. Well, you know... <laughs> All right, we, we're going to try to blaze through the last parts of these. Uh, who is going to vote for Will defending for Archer? And who is going to vote for Jeremy for defending Parks and Rec? Please let us say, know in the comments. Parks and Rec, that shit is funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, dang, now these are very even arguments. <laughs> I, I, I think they got the problematic Chris, though. Stan says getting better and better is the opposite of consistency. <laughs> it's, I, I'm, uh, to, to paraphrase Emerson. I somehow uh, got votes on that one. Yeah. To paraphrase Emerson. Uh, Sam Newman, it's not about the show. It's about who had a better argument. <laughs> to be fair, he didn't vote for Will. Parks and Rec is too sentimental for me. Stan did. It's funny, but you know. Get the hell out of here, Stan. <laughs> wow. Just kidding. <laughs> Parks and Rec is too f sentimental? Is that what you said? Yeah, you know, it's all about, like, uh, help. Here's what I should have said. Oh, my God, I missed such a great opportunity. I should have said, Parks and Rec is literally one of the funniest shows <laughs> of all time. I would have voted for you for that one. <laughs> God damn well, it. Too late. Uh, I'm going to feel bad now because uh, I, I wanted to make sure that this show got some love, but I think Will is easily going to win this <laughs> next one. Sorry, Jerry. You were supposed to win that one with Parks and Rec, and it didn't pan out. Uh, yeah, I defended it as best I could in 30 seconds. Aubrey Plaza, most famous person from Rhode Island, Delaware, wherever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Aubrey Plaza makes any show. Delaware. Anything she's a part Delaware. of. Yeah. Okay. So Delaware, Will... no sales tax. <laughs> Will... the, what was that movie she was in with uh, Zach yeah, Efron? Pizza. She was in a Zach Efron movie, wasn't she? Oh, yeah. Dirty Grandpa. No, no, no. Zach Efron. Dirty Grandpa. Uh, isn't that no, no. Mike, and, Mike and Dave need wedding dates or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. She was in two Dirty, Zac Efron movies? Hold on. Wasn't Dirty Grandpa Zac Efron and Robert De Niro? Was I think it? it's so funny that you keep saying what, Dirty Was Grandpa. Aubrey Plaza in it? I'm pretty sure Aubrey Plaza was in it, yeah. Yeah, she, she like, had sex with Robert De Niro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, 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 don't know Efron. I didn't know Zac Efron. Was hey, there. remember in Wayne's World where they're like, imagine being magically whisked away to the wonderful world of Delaware. <laughs> Hi. I'm in Delaware. <laughs> so, so she was in two movies with Zac Efron. Why yeah. is this amazing? Okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are carrying on again. I apologize in advance, Jeremy. Uh, Will, you're going to defend <laughs> Seinfeld. Jeremy, oh. you're defending Happy Endings. Okay. Uh, Will, you are up first. You got 45 seconds, and your time starts now. What is the deal with the sitcom format? I mean, we know what they're supposed to do, but we don't often know how to do it well. And the thing about like Seinfeld, the thing about Seinfeld is that it knew how to get the cast together. It knew how to write scripts about nothing that amounted to something, and it knew how to hold the reservation. Is it, is that it? Are you are you? Oh, I got more. I got more time. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave a generation of unhappily married people a way out. <laughs> All right, Jeremy. Uh, I, surprisingly, said, I think you. I think you have a you chance. What? On this one. Well, no blackface and happy endings. So. That's a nice change from the rest of this episode uh, of shows I have to defend. Um, listen, I bet you 90% of the people in the in the chat have not seen... Yep, there you go, Stan. 90% of the people have not seen Happy Endings. This was on my list, so I set myself up for disaster, uh, despite Ryan being the one that paired it, paired it with Seinfeld. Um, uh, it's uh, it's like a better version of Friends. It's like if Friends was like uh, extra weird uh, and not and didn't hold back on its jokes. Um, it's got a great cast um, uh, that play perfectly off of one another. I don't know how it's supposed to compete with Seinfeld. <laughs> it's, it's not. It, the the defense is. Uh, I don't know. It's another short-lived show. All my shows are short-lived shows that sadly <laughs> lasted three seasons. For anybody that has not seen Happy Endings, it is friends with adult jokes and absurd humor. Uh, I just want to. I just want. Like, I'm not trying to sway the vote, but according to Google, there was a racist parrot. Yeah, but the racist parrot didn't spray paint his face black. Well, it didn't. Or have get up on stage like Michael Richards did. <laughs> Yeah, DC said Elijah Cuthbert versus uh, the girl next door. The girl next door versus the comedian who shouted. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I prefer Curb personally, but I, I, I stand by the uh, getting out of a bad marriage uh, technique. Now, um, what Ryan said about happy endings is true, and I just want to say that almost everything on my list was really to highlight some. Very underrated shows, in my opinion. Stuff like happy endings. I think you should leave Police Squad. So, if nothing else comes out of this, and if I don't win, which I don't think I'm gonna, please check out all the shows that I'm not defending very well. Everybody, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, don't let that patriarchal thinking infect your infect your DNA, man. This is this isn't about competition. This is about celebration. Okay, we're voting for the defense in that round. Uh, did Will defend Seinfeld better, or did Jeremy defend Happy Endings better? Which one gets your vote? Put their name in the chat, and we will see which one moves on to the next round. The next round will be much, much quicker, and then after this, we'll only have a few things left, I promise. I thought Seinfeld had a happy ending in, in terms of society. What number are we on? Uh, I don't think... 
it uh just a minute <laughs> are you trying to leave no i i can't see it because i'm currently selecting the winner no, no. Of the last one is, is jeremy trying to leave oh oh no 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 I was just curious how many more we had left. I'll stay and talk to you all night long, Dr. Dodson. Oh, my God. This is so fun. This is uh, for the audience. This is our first time meeting, and I've been wanting this forever. But I've been afraid to ask Ryan because it's like it's his show. Yeah. And I don't want to, like, impose. I know it was going to happen sooner or later because. Oh, man, I've wanted to meet you, like, from the very beginning. <laughs> oh, I'm so very flattered. That made my whole night. I mean it, too. I'm not even bullshitting. What? We we are on the sixteenth one. Give him right the now. win. Give him the win. After those kind words, <laughs> oh man! Sometimes people think I'm kidding when I'm serious, and think I'm serious when I'm kidding. I think it's my accent. Probably true. Uh, we are on our last one, and uh, this oh, well, the last one of the first round. What Burger King bathroom is Jeremy in? Said somebody. This is my. I'm in an. <laughs> That's office. really funny. I'm in an office because I'm an adult. <laughs> hey, you know what? I uh, I once got busy in a Burger King bathroom. I mean, that sounds way better than being in an office. Did you Did you have it your way? Hmm? I well, you know, I did the Humpty dance. All right. <laughs> All right. Early '90s hip hop is not getting anywhere. Okay. What's her name? Uh, Wendy. No, Did man. she have sesame seed buns? Anyways. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? I don't know. Uh, is that me? Or that we are going to go to the last one. You guys are all emo punk. I I, I was in the Oakland hip hop in the early 90s. You don't know the Humpty Dance? I know the Humpty Dance. I mean, I know, I, mean, I know what it is. Yeah, the reference is a lot dated. The Humpty but... Dance. It's, there's no dating. There's no, you can get busy in a burgeoning bathroom at any time. That is, they're designed for that. For they're the record, designed. I'm clipping that part of this show and <laughs> spreading it far and wide. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're now the version of the Humpty Dance in one of his polka medleys, but it, and it's just like a slow jazz version of the Humpty Dance. I remember that one. Well, the dance is your chance to do the home. Was that all off, right? Was that off a of polka time or dare, the Dare to Be Stupid? I think album? it was the Dare to Be Stupid album. That so here we go. Uh, uh, last oh of the my god. Time. How am I supposed to compete with Faulty Towers? Jerry is the like that show. That guy's arrested racist. development, and Will is defending Faulty Towers. Uh, Jeremy, you're up first. You got 45 seconds for arrested development. Go. Listen, uh, it launched the careers of Paul Rudd. And <laughs> <laughs> um, not blackface, but blueface. Um, uh, <laughs> listen, uh, I think in this particular instance, all I have to say is David Cross, you know, Tobias Funke, uh, made this show. Um, but real, I mean, I don't know. I feel like a repetitive asshole. Cause I just keep saying like, what a great cast, you know, what a great cast of characters, but really that's what I'm drawn to. That's why that's like the common thread between everything on my list is it's like really perfect, like pitch perfect casting that have such a great uh, dynamic with one another. And Will, Will mentioned Jessica Walters in his Archer argument, so I'm going to say Jessica Walters again. Mike. And, and if, I'd had, the, if I'd had the chance, I would have mentioned Portia de Rossi in my Ally McBeal defense, but I didn't get to talk about how great Ally McBeal is. Yeah. All right, Will, you're up. Well, if you love racist caricatures, then Faulty Tar Towers is the show for you. It uh, it's racist without being like racist in the wrong way. You know what I mean? Like the you can get away with it because it's about like Spaniards. Um, so I'm just gonna say go with Arrested Development the first like couple seasons. Don't don't vote for me. Fuck faulty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to point out this this started with Jeremy saying, "How can I compete with faulty towers?" Oh, that was just hilarious. Yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, Will is giving up on this one. No, I, I feel like I gave an accurate defense of Faulty Towers. <laughs> so and now, Will, and if I you want really to like Faulty Towers, I mean, I'm not saying Will's wrong, but I love that show. If you if you want to vote for Faulty Towers, tell us what kind of person you are. <laughs> Jesus. Oh wow! 
That's now. right, DC. I'm Black Adder all the way. That's the fucking show right there. Oh, Black Adder, I love too. Anything with Rowan Atkins, then give me so, that. Oh, Thin Blue Line. That show is fucking amazing. Thin Blue Line. Yeah. Uh, what's that other one? Like Freaking where he's the detective. Yeah, that's the one I'm trying to think of. The the drama one where he's all serious and shit. But you're like expecting him to do some Mr. Bean stuff any moment. You're like, wait a minute, Rowan Atkinson can talk? Wave, <laughs> we, are, we are voting for who defended the show better, and Will just gave up on Faulty Towers. Listen, I got to tell you this. I, I'm going to give some context. Uh, I saw Faulty Towers for the first time when I was in high school. Uh, a friend of mine showed it to me, and I was like, this is fucking terrible. And my friend was like, oh, don't say that so loud. My dad loves Faulty Towers. And I said, well, your dad fucking sucks. And we quit being friends. And he went on to be a law clerk for Anton and Scalia. So <laughs> you, tell me, you tell me it was right. I, I was really hoping you were going to say, and and turns out his dad was John Cleese. No, his dad's dead. But His um, dad was Michael Taylor. <laughs> no, he's dead. But um, but it is true. The, the guy went on to clerk for Anton and Scalia. And there you go. We are on the different sides of Faulty Towers. I'm on the anti Scalia side. Look at, I don't... These, look at DC's comment. I don't know why I'm getting attacked so much tonight. <laughs> DC's just uh, funny. Uh, okay. So, uh, amazingly enough, if you look at the entire bracket, it is a perfectly balanced bracket. Uh, Will, Will, Will and Jeremy both have the exact uh, same number of entries in the second round wow. so we are now going to change it up for the second round i'm going to make this full screen uh we are going to have a very quick lightning round each of you can grab hold of one of these two shows uh one at a time and you're gonna have 10 seconds uh oh, Jer- we, pick what we pick i'm gonna ask you do you want to go with looney tunes or how i met your mother first I mentioned mother. Uh, Will, I'm, I'm assuming you're happy with Looney Tunes. Uh, whatever you want me to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Jeremy, you're going to defend How I Met Your Mother ten for ten seconds. seconds. Yes, okay. quickly okay. and specifically, why is it better than Looney Tunes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready, go. How I Met Your Mother got a spinoff called How I Met Your Father. I don't see a show called Sane Tunes. Thank you. What a terrible defense. Uh, Will, (laughs) you get 10 seconds with Looney Tunes. Ready? Go. Looney Tunes got like a thousand spinoffs, if that's what we're going on. (laughs) And then I'll just say, Bugs Bunny, who do you know from How I Met Your Mother? Time. Okay. (laughs) Dear God. Uh. All right, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick uh, my my winners in this bracket. So, oh my god, hang on a second. Wait, you're picking? <laughs> I'm picking so that way we can go through the second round quick, and then we're and gonna have every Looney Tunes because wow. his defense was ten thousand times better than yours. <laughs> I, wait, can I change my descent? Uh, how I Met Your Mother is legend. Wait for it, Dairy. References are not a good defense. Uh, Will, since Jeremy chose first last time, you can choose first this time. Do you want Freaks and Geeks or BoJack Horseman? Nah, that sucked, Doc. Um, <laughs> what you, what's, what's the question? Do you want Freaks and Geeks or BoJack Horseman? Uh, freaks and Geeks. Jeremy, BoJack Horseman is yours. Uh, Will, you're going to go first. Ten seconds on Freaks and Geeks. Go. Oh, so relatable. <laughs> like we we all lived it. We all lived it. That shit's hilarious. Monty Python, D and D. Okay. First day. Jeremy, Slint- ten Halloween. seconds on Bojack Horseman. Ready? Go. Oh, that shit is funny. <laughs> uh talking animals, Will Arnett, Margot Martindale. <laughs> shit, I don't know who is better there. Because <laughs> Margot Martindale. I don't know that you know, she just blew up some guy's face in cocaine bear. Oh, <laughs> uh, she was also a villain in a season of Justified. She's so was great. That, I love her. One of the that, most one of the most that, underrated character actors out there. Is that that Kentucky Cop show? Yes. 
Yeah, oh, with good old uh, what's his face, Timothy Oliphant. Oh. oh man, I want to see that. That what are why are you? What are you doing, Ryan? Ryan's that like, boy... <laughs> Will. No man, that oily fan guy, De uh, freaking Deadwood. Oh, that's a good. Okay, show. we 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 are starting to lose it. Uh, the next one. Uh, losing it because you're purposely voting for not my argument. <laughs> not at all, Jeremy. I, I'm assuming you're wanting Community over the Jeffersons. I do, yeah. Will, you got the Jeffersons. Uh, Jeremy, you are going first on this one. Ten seconds. Go. Uh, well, I'm going to try not to Brita it. Even, listen. There, <laughs> Time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> Will. <laughs> You make the bracket whole screen again so I can hide my embarrassment. <laughs> Will, you got the Jeffersons. 10 seconds. Go. Oh, well, we're moving on up to the semifinals. Oh. Um, <laughs> Sherman, Helmsley, Isabel Sanford, Marla Gibbs. Again, Hilarious. references are not a good argument. Our no, arguments, the names, the names of the actors. Our arguments have come down. What are you doing, Ryan? <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> that was my argument. <laughs> you should have just spent five percent of your time doing nothing. He just named actors on the show, I, which I was also, somehow more than you did. I also made a I joke about a direct quote from the show, and then gave an example of it by doing. It was it was a little too like Nathan for you. Okay, uh, obviously in the next one, Will wants The Simpsons, and Jeremy wants It's Always Sunny. Will, oh. you're going first. Ten seconds with The Simpsons. Go. I don't have a cow, man. This is the most iconic animated show of all time. Undisputed. Uh, it is the best use of uh, maximum Jeremy, drive. Jeremy, ten seconds with It's Always Sunny. Go. Uh, unlike The Simpsons, doesn't have big names behind it when it first started it was birthed out of the uh purely creative writing that it time i i'm actually going to agree with that uh yeah it was actually championed by a woman <laughs> so <laughs> Wait, look at what sorry about said. that that the women didn't have big names paul huggins said exactly why you should have given that one to me ryan you son of a bitch Wow. <laughs> Going against women comedians. I see how it is for Jeremy Long in Los Angeles, <laughs> California. <laughs> hey, I don't want to get canceled over this game that I'm doing terribly at. Wow. All right. Uh, so this one, uh, who just went first? Uh, I did. Jeremy oh, wait, did. Okay. Wait. I'm drunk. <laughs> You're drunk? No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I am. Oh, no. Will went first for The Simpsons. So, Jeremy, you're going first this time on Futurama, and then, Will, you are up on Batman. Jeremy, 10 seconds. Ready? Go. If if I... I'm, gonna, I'm giving Futurama all my money because it's the best adult comedy show. Time. That was a reference to the show, Ryan. I, I understood it. And I already said references are not a good argument. <laughs> what about am I supposed to say in 10 seconds? Uh, as much as you possibly can. <laughs> Will, show us why 10 seconds is enough to argue for Batman. Go. I had an astonishingly different take. This is the this is the first superhero show that was a comedy that it, it brought camp humor to mainstream uh, uh, okay. audiences. I don't know which one was better there. <laughs> Uh, that's I a also good made a reference. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with Futurama, I think. Uh, okay, Saturday Night Live and Police Squad. Jeremy, you are first with Police Squad. But first, uh, somebody wants to ask, what are the big names that were on The Simpsons when it first started? Conan O'Brien. Uh, wasn't a big name at the time. Um. You know, all those other people. Can we move on? 
<laughs> hey, you know who you know who was on The Simpsons? Dave Roll. He was on The Simpsons. Uh, Will, you are going to hit us with Saturday Night Live first, and then Jeremy, you're going to go with Police Squad. Okay. Uh, Will, ten seconds, go. Let the boy be funny on TV. Ah! Wow. He said references don't count. (laughs) Um, 10 seconds, please. I loved it, Will. I loved it. Your time starts now. Um, uh, Unique, unique, fresh, and original, especially for its time. Uh, Many have tried to mimic it. None have been successful. Leslie Nielsen. (laughs) Leslie Nielsen. Uh, I kind of wanted to give it Saturday Night Live, but I'm not going to. Because I gave a better argument. Yes. Wow. Amazing that amazing that a cop show would get a rigged vote. (laughs) Oh man! How they do Uh, in Kansas City? (laughs) Wow. Uh, let's see. Jeremy, oh, you're up. Oh, James L. Brooks answered answered the question for me. Or, <laughs> <he's> the <laughs> James L. Brooks is watching? Pitch something, Jeremy. <laughs> Listen, it's, uh... This is, is a, just, say, just say, hey, this is, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> um... Okay, before, it, yeah, we, we need to move on. Jeremy, you're first with Larry Sanders' show, then Will has Archer. Larry Sanders, your time starts now. Are you saying you don't want this to be a five-hour stream? Uh, Larry Sanders' show flipped the entire uh, talk show format on its head. Uh, Will, Archer, time starts now. Talk about flipping things. Oh, Archer flips the script of sp- Spy com spy shows and and uh, just everything is so fucking. What crazy. is this? <laughs> and Jessica Walters is dead. I is mean, I, and I thought they handled it beautifully. You know, vote for whoever you want. I thought I thought it was <laughs> you, you, you tell me how Larry Sanders handled Gary Shandling's death. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Archer was quite sensitive. Is this that show was... everything you imagined it would be, Ryan? So far, it's great. I can't wait until the next episode. Uh, so oh, this one, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'll tell you, you right. may not have a choice. I uh, have... On, <laughs> I may not have a liver. <laughs> Will, uh, you are going first with Seinfeld, and then Jeremy gets arrested development, and then we go back to something different. Will. Go. I think I've sabotaged my leap. What is the deal with brackets? They put things in the brackets, but you don't know time, time. where things are going. Jeremy, 10 seconds. Rest of development. Go. Um, really, it was uh, kind of the uh, hidden camera uh, sitcom format prior to The Office or uh, Parks and Recreation. So very original. Well, thank God this round is over because that was yeah, not great. No, the UK office was way before Arrested Development. That's not, that's not accurate. And I said in the U.S. I, Wait, feel, like I, I feel like I've been an all rapist. To do. <laughs> Jeremy uh, won all four of those. <laughs> I've been an all rapisted. Well, Dodson's getting wasted as we. <laughs> it's true. My, you know what's getting wasted? My he's talent. Peeing, he's peeing in his wine bottle and then drinking it again. All right, I'm. We keep, they're separate bottles. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> One's on one. Look, look. This is all about love for comedy, and I, I don't want to lose sight of that. I think people have getting getting caught up in the. the <laughs> wow how patriarchal no go ahead, go ahead. wow Silent. it was all in the name of comedy i promise continue your perpetuation of the systemic oh man okay <laughs> we are now officially the off crickets. we are officially off the rails uh, the final two rounds here, which we are now down to eight, then we will get to four. I guess that's more than two rounds. Then two, then one. 
Which uh, one's which? DC uh, Edmer <laughs> wants to know. Which which <laughs> one? Would like to know. <laughs> which one is which? I don't know. One's Pinot Grigio and one's Pinot Grigio. Uh, okay. What we're going to do. I hope you're proud of yourself, Ryan. I'm you getting brought, there. You brought this upon the world. <laughs> Paul says Will took the term stream too seriously. <laughs> Uh, we are now at the point where we are going to throw out all of the defense and we're going to look at what we have left and the chat is going to vote for these okay. Looney Tunes oh. and Freaks and Geeks which is the better show Hold on, let me tell not Sam a defense some shows are six seasons in a movie other shows are 12 years of shorts and then a show <laughs> <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> that was a hell of an argument. Well, hopefully we still have viewers watching that can vote. Is Looney Tunes or Freaks and Geeks going to get your vote? Let us know in the chat. Yes. Did we lose a significant amount of viewers? Yes, you did. Was it, was, it my, was it my David Letterman story? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think that was all of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so right now we are at one-to-one. -one. Yes, we are naming oh, shows. Hey. I've got a One Tree Hill story. <laughs> Such a wow. random show. To pick. I mean, I, I think of it as a comedy. I like that show. I don't yeah. think it's a comedy. Oh, my sister my sister went to school with uh, Peyton. Oh, Haley. What's her name? Haley. Yeah. The, no, no, no. The lady that she's married to um, Negan. I forget what her real name is now. Haley Reed, Burton, Burton, uh, Hillary Burton, not Haley. Hillary Burton, we got it, <laughs> we got it, we did it, Doc. Hey, uh, teamwork. We you know got what? a total of three votes. I don't, I don't care about the votes. You know what the the real takeaway <laughs> from this show is? We develop teamwork. Just a reminder to those in the chat, Sam Newman, uh, you're voting for the which show is better. And Looney Tunes or Freaks and Geeks? Jeremy's pick is Freaks and Geeks. Wink. Hey, look, I love Freaks and Geeks. Hey, I the Mystery Science Theater guys. <laughs> <laughs> but Looney Tunes. <laughs> Wait, is that to me or to everybody else? Don't let you drink. Because my doctor agrees. Uh, is a problem. <laughs> hey, all I want to say is... Yeah, <laughs> what's up, Doc Will Dodson? <laughs> All right, Looney Tunes has won this one. It has. It has by three to two. I think it uh, should. I think. Wait it a should. minute. One. Oh I man, I this shit's going to be political right here. This shit is getting. This is societal. Think about your votes, people. Okay, the Jeffersons or It's Always Sunny. Which one is the better show? They're both long running. Don't 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 be uh, don't be don't just knee jerk this. Technically, Sunny all has more seasons than Jeffersons. Well, not technically. technically Sunny has more seasons than anything. Yeah, that's a an, lot of stuff. Yeah, this is actually you don't have to get technical. No, than anything. <laughs> yeah. Than anything, it doesn't have more seasons than Simpsons. Than any uh, any actual live action. live action sitcom. Oh, yeah. live action. Um, but the Jeffersons could have kept going if they wanted to. Probably, I think so. I I'm saying that it's a tie so far. No, I, I got two for Sunny. One or now it is. Uh, sorry, three for Sunny, two for Jeffersons. Oh, okay, okay. Tylenol. You guys are into you guys are into rape jokes. That's cool. <laughs> Daniel Tosh in the chat. On a scale of one to everybody, how many viewers did we lose? Uh, three. Oh, that's not that bad. I thought we lost. No, that, that's closer to the end of this. this well, game. how many, the real question is, how many subscribers have you lost? Probably a <laughs> significant number. Uh, <laughs> next, Futurama or Police Squad? Which one is the better oh, hey, show? These are both Jays. How do we decide who won that round? Ryan. That part does not matter. Okay. You'll see why in just a minute. I I vote for uh, Stan says 
I'm a doctor, so I don't rate my doctor. I'll tell you a funny story about that. Sam uh, voted for himself. Should I tell? Oh, I'm going to tell the story anyway while people are voting. <laughs> I went to this. Uh, I, I, took, I took my kid. No, it's a short story. Um, I took. <laughs> I took my kid to a, a, a birthday party, and I, I met the I met the family that was hosting it. And the guy was like, "Oh, you're a doctor. We got some other doctors here." And he introduced me to um, uh, this is this is true. This is not like a setup, um, but he introduced me to these this couple. And like one of them was a, a neurosurgeon, and the other was like an obstetrician or something. And they're like, uh, "What kind of doctor are you?" And I go, uh, "Poems." <laughs> <laughs> True story. The conversation pretty much ended after that. Uh, we're not, we did not see friends. It was not meant to be. They got think, awkward. Yeah, I, I think it would. All right, we are now voting Larry Sanders or Arrested Development. I feel a lot better about my David Letterman story after that. <laughs> really? <laughs> that was a great response. <laughs> hey, you know, one time. I was in LA and I saw Zach De La Rocha eating a salad in a restaurant. And you know what I did? Uh, I met eyes with him and I just nodded. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is not even close. Arrested Development won. Yeah. Wow, Gary Shandling's. I don't think enough was... people are familiar with the Larry Sanders show, to be honest. Yeah, I kind of feel like that was disrespectful. <laughs> that's like that's like adding insult to injury. All right, so the hard part here, uh, we've got three Jeremys and one Will. Um, we have come down on one side, Looney Tunes versus It's Always Sunny, and Future. Wait, wait, wait. Versus- you just you just uh, articulated my fantasy. Three Jeremys and one Will. Shh! Don't tell anybody. <laughs> we can we can arrange that. I'll come over with some shrooms and a. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, on the left we've got. <laughs> Looney Tunes and Always Sunny. On the right, we've got Futurama and Arrested Development. I'm curious, is there a consensus from you two on that right side, which one you'd rather defend? On the right side? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know about consensus. Then Futurama. Futurama. Oh, do you so want to you... go to Futurama, Will? No, I, I, I'm saying there's a consensus. I'm totally Quakering with you right now. Oh, he's saying Futurama wins. Yeah. No, <laughs> we don't even have to defend it, Ryan. I'm holding you in the light. We're like in alignment. <laughs> Ryan's whole show is messed up. It kind of. Oh wait. Okay, so... Oh wait. All right. You want me to be? Combative? No, it's, it, it's okay. No, please don't be combative. Uh, we'll say Futurama <laughs> won that one. But now we're gonna have two more arguments. Uh, Will mm, this... you're going to defend Looney Tunes? Mm-hmm. Jeremy, mm-hmm. you're going to defend It's Always Sunny. You officially mm-hmm. have one minute. Try to take it semi-seriously to win one this. Minute. One minute. This is a final uh, defense for these two, leading to the overall defense. I got a question before you start the clock. Yes. Who goes at, this, at this point, are we done with the argument over where the Looney Tunes is a show? Yes. Okay. Looney Tunes is absolutely a show. Uh, Will, you are defending Looney Tunes first. You have one minute, and your time starts now. If there was no Looney Tunes, there would be no It's Sunny, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So first of all, there's that. There's the history. Second of all, a perfect marriage uh, of animation, voice performance, and musical composition. The iconography. Of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Tasmanian Devil, uh, even Pepe Le Pew. I'll say it. Um, uh, (laughs) These characters not only created uh, cultural icons, they also defined the structure of North American comedy. Um, And I, I defy anyone to say any different. This shit has been funny for at least four generations. I watch Looney Tunes with my 10-year-old daughter. I watch Looney Tunes with my 73-year-old father. And I used to watch Looney Tunes with my dead grandma. That's it? Okay, time. Uh, Jeremy, you've got one minute with It's Always Sunny, and your time starts now. 
Listen, I think the best way to explain the cultural significance of this show is what we said earlier, which is that it is indeed the longest running live action uh, sitcom comedy show existing. Um, and that's solely on the merits of the creators and stars, of which is the same. Uh, while I agree that uh, Looney Tunes is some of the earliest comedy that influenced several shows, I would disagree that it influenced a show like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, because It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is totally taking the formulaic standard and flipping it it's on its head. It's going, it's taking several taboo topics and and not being afraid to just tackle them head on and go to the most extreme possible with their uh, crazy antics and storylines. And, you know, just again, a cr crazy cast of characters that work so well together. Time. And, and what network is it on? FX. 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 What is that? Yeah. A, how do you, is that a streaming service? Is you that know, a... it's just another uh, two letter uh, uh, company like WB. FX, all of their shows are on Hulu. If you want to watch it, that's WB. you mean you mean CW where I watch Star Girl? Will did okay. not watch it. He was just trying to diss it. <laughs> okay. Based on the defenses specifically for this round, was Will defending Looney Tunes better or was Jeremy defending Always Sunny better? Please let us know in the chat. <laughs> Will thinks it was spaced jam. <laughs> <laughs> Do you imagine? Wait, 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 wait. Is that? Are that? Is that? Is Brian Dennehy in that? Is that? Is that? What is that? What is FX? <laughs> <laughs> I, how can it? I mean, I know it's the longest running like, show ever. Back. <laughs> I know it's. I know it's the longest running show ever. But like, who watches it? Everybody watches it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the longest running. Everybody, show ever. I I can't name a single one of. A, I can't name a single person I know that has ever seen it's always something in Philadelphia. But I I have I have black friends. So <laughs> Jesus. I don't know what I don't know what to rebuttal against that. <laughs> uh, all I can say is spaced jam. Can you imagine if Edgar Wright directed a Looney Tunes movie? Yeah. Days With his musical beats and cuts and everything? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got two for Will. We've got two for Jeremy. <laughs> Sibner says you have to go to a meeting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, uh, what, did I, what did I do that was so wrong? Have I said something <laughs> inaccurate? I want to know. I want to know. Does Travis is Travis's vote for me when he says checkmate, Jeremy, or is that against me? I, I counted that as a vote for you. I took you, Queen. Great. <laughs> Travis, if that wasn't a vote for me, don't respond. Because <laughs> I'm pretty I'm sure pretty sure it was a vote for you, but I, I don't know what I've done to alienate the audience. It I was, think it was the I have black friends argument. Oh, sorry, but I do. <laughs> sorry, right. my, is sorry that, my friend group is diversified. Yeah, is that is that a problem for the audience? I'm looking through the screen names and I'm seeing kind of monochromatic audience here. Do you, do you have a problem with that? Like, maybe you should examine your own cell. Well, the hard part is uh, we we've got a tie. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Well, let's have, uh, a, let's have a, Ryan. I am going to pick, and I, I do think that the Looney Tunes argument was very good here. You do? I was I was going to suggest we have a, a tie, but I'll also take the win. Well, that's not a win yet. We have two animated shows here going head to head for the best show ever. Oh, well, I don't really think that's an argument though between Looney Tunes. It's it kind of it kind of isn't an argument. I mean, now that we're it was easy to it was easy to fight against Looney Tunes with other shows, but when it comes down to two animated shows, you know, Will Will's argument earlier about uh, Looney Tunes being like the inspiration for so many future shows. Well, point of order. It literally is. <laughs> this is where I'm changing it. 
Oh. You you are not allowed to argue based on the legacy of these shows. Oh, you I'm are a... now literally what? arguing based on why this is the best literal comedy show of all time. Mm-hmm. Not meaning it inspired anything else. Not meaning it led to the other one. Nothing like that. Why it is the funniest show of all time. Jeremy, you are going first with Futurama. You have 45 seconds. And your time starts now futurama is the funniest show of all time because uh it has uh dialogue (laughs) um whereas looney tunes uh though uh, definitely a cultural inspiration relied mostly on visual gags for for the most part um which is not a knock against it but um therefore the writing relied a, a lot on the visual gags uh whereas the writing in futurama is so quippy and witty and smart um that you almost can't catch your breath from one scene to the next because of how fast the jokes are flying by not to mention you got a time. Modern... i was timed yep 45 oh, seconds I... I said oh i didn't hear that part okay can i say one last thing just because it's so it's so appropriate. we'll let we'll have one last thing after as well okay great you do have the modern day mel mel blank in futurama which is voice actor billy west who voices fry zap Brannigan, dr zoeberg the professor and so many other characters the same way mel brooks or sorry jesus mel blank voiced just about every looney tunes character which uh you know, shows that it was greatly inspired by Looney Tunes, but again, took what Looney Tunes established and then built upon it and, and just tr- cranked it up to 100. All right, Will. 45 seconds, Looney Tunes, without the legacy. Your time starts now. I knew about Blank. Mel Blank was a friend of mine. That Futurama guy is no Mel Blank. <laughs> um consistency of animation of music of dialogue and yes of visual humor which you know i think animation should probably have um you know it's easy to be funny when you're just talking shit obviously look at me for the last two and a half hours um (laughs) but looney tunes (laughs) managed to over the course of decades with multiple characters with their own personalities create fully formed worlds and even micro genres within itself tailored to each character. Time. So the now final, you have one more thing. The yeah. final the Look, final thing the final thing I would say is the answer to the question did you think Bugs Bunny was hot when you dressed up like a girl is <clears throat> yes. I should I should win just based on my <laughs> wow. <laughs> my closing argument alone. All right. So that was a, that was a thing. Can, can we highlight DC's last comment? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking without being able to verbalize it. <laughs> All right. So we are now voting finally on Will or Jeremy as the final argument of the night. Ah, fuck, I wish Stan was still here. I would have won with the Lloyd Benson reference. Stan is still here. He says, I'm conflicted. Oh, well, give me the <laughs> Lloyd Benson reference. And Sam argument. Sam Truman says, good argument, Will. I don't know how. <laughs> I think that was sarcasm, Jeremy. <laughs> hey, look, man. There's no sarcasm font, okay? <laughs> hey, you want to you know something funny? I actually, I texted you. I, <laughs> how, Stan? I'm gonna I'm gonna be truthful here. I texted uh, Ryan and was like, "Can I include Looney Tunes?" And Ryan was like, "I wouldn't." And I was like, ah, "I don't know. Like, maybe I won't." But then I looked it up, and Looney Tunes that had so many different syndicated shows on so many different channels. And I grew up watching Looney Tunes on TBS and, and sure. TV. So, yeah. so I ended up including Looney Tunes. And I think it would be totally appropriate if it won. 
I mean, look, it made it the whole. Uh, if not, if nothing else, if it doesn't win, it made it the whole way. Well, I think that says something about the uh, impact it's had on a uh, multi generational audience. We are tied. I, we two could two. We couldn't say we couldn't talk about the legacy though. And I want everybody in the comments to remember that. Because <laughs> <laughs> if we were. Well, Futurama has been uh, as as been on the air almost as long as Looney Tunes was, <laughs> like the 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 original. The actual, yeah, the original. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, after all of that, it appears Will has won by one uh, vote. I'll never forgive you, Stan and Travis. Ah man, <laughs> I I feel despicable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get you rascal you rabbit <laughs> next time <laughs> well you can't you, you can't make fun of speech impediments anymore <laughs> you can't do it can't. well this has been an illuminating evening uh, congrats on all of your debate skills there will be an internal debate of myself if we should do this ever again um, I appreciate <laughs> The if time dedicated again, tonight. We not be at work and also have Pinot Grigio like Will. We should we should do best dramas. Th that's okay. not vague at all. That would be interesting. Hey, like, what's your defense of the Sopranos? <laughs> <laughs> okay, before uh, my channel gets deleted, uh, <laughs> thank you all for your time. Thank you for voting and. Uh, helping this devolve into whatever this mess is. I appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, we'll, we'll talk again on I Thursday. Everything I said. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and you know 